Gamers, it is time for the first monthly AT of the new expansion. Let's see what kind of broken stuff is going on here. We've got some, uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on. And actually, wait, can we just see 55 immediately? I want to see the broken, disgusting theory craft that people have come up with. Some of the relics are OP. Some of the new weapon combos are probably pretty OP. This is going to be good, right? I'm ready for this. I'm ready to get in there. Let's make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> the only, do you know what the only problem is? I'll tell you what the only problem is. The only problem is that they have not updated the PvP UI to show relics. That's right. Look at that. <laughs> so I can't, I don't know. But we can probably guess. For example, uh, for Berserker, Relic of Akeem is incredibly good because you can skull grind to something and instantly activate it for 10 confusion stacks on one ability. Here on Chronomancer, you can clearly see that it's a lot of power chronomancer, power meso builds in general kind of floating about right now. Um, not with the shield, actually. It's going to be sword pistol Blue team grabbed the on the chronomancer point. build. I can only gank druid build coming in here with sword warhorn and then staff. Do we have anything new coming through? This is probably going to be a pretty straightforward game. This is a very solid team here, actually, on red team. Should be looking pretty good. But yeah, I think the, the big stuff is going to be this berserker. As it does a lot of damage. Let's see if we can see a skull grinder. Where's a skull grinder? I want to see a skull grinder land here. So we can see the absolute devastation that is about to occur. Here we go. Going to wait for a player to respawn. Oh. What's going on? They're AFK. Not even playing the game. But in general, I don't think... Um, I don't think a lot of... The meta has actually changed that much. I think you're going to see a lot of the same elite specializations. Obviously, there aren't any new ones. Um, but, of course, we do have relics and weapon... Mar well, I, look, I was hoping this player was going to do something, but they're clearly not. Well, fine, i go in another game then. Let's go see something else. Let's see what 55 are doing. Okay, here we go. Ooh, okay. So we actually have Boyce. Here on the Soul Beast. And yeah, I've heard this build actually pops off right now. Uh, does a lot of damage. Huge amount of damage, I believe, using Firework Runes. Rune of Spellbreaker here for just like some all-round good stats. Here we have Vitality, Power, and Precision. Just some good stats for any kind of like a roaming DPS build. Spectre here. Rune of the Rebel. This is also a very popular rune uh, in the new set. It just gives you a lot of value. All stats and just extra health. Uh, somewhat similar to the old Divinity rune with the extra health on that. Catalyst is going to be played from Frey. This is a very similar build to last time. It's the Hammer build, Hammer Catalyst. With Fire, Arcane, and Catalyst. With Rune of the Doliak and Marauder Amulet. Not sure, uh, actually, about the uh, relic that's being used here. I've heard um, a lot of builds are running Antitoxin right now, so that's also possible. We have Misha, actually, on Support Guardian. I think this build is actually going to be very, very similar. Run the Dolyak, just more toughness, more vitality. And I imagine the uh, Conley Cleanse is going to be used there, either on Shout, or actually, uh, it might even be... Um, uh, relic of the antitoxin here because the relic of the antitoxin says that whenever you cleanse a condition it cleanses an extra condition actually um so that includes say your regular comedy cleanse not just your shouts including the shouts because they by default remove a condition because of advance uh, and also blasting light fields as well so essentially a, a lot of extra condition removal can be obtained through that relic at the same time. Very similar build here overall, and Draza on that Berserker build. This is going to be uh, Rune of the Trapper. Just look at that Connie. Look at that Connie damage, seriously. Crazy Connie damage there with Rabid Amulet, and then it will be Relic of Akeem on this one. Let's see if we can actually capture this. Let's see if we can go ahead and take a look. Check this out. Here we go, 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 here we go. This is going to be disgusting. Watch this Skull Grinder land on this player. It will be 10 stacks of confusion. Here we go. Oh boy. Poor old prototype Astral. Not, uh, oh, well, they actually died so quickly. That sadly, we are not going to see the uh, insane Skull Grinder, but that's okay. Uh, you know, there'll be some other games where we might be able to witness the uh, the awesome power of it. 
Here we go. Let's see what this Soul V spill is going to do. Again, it's very similar to the the, you know, the, the Soul V spill that existed before. You can see the massive damage output. Relic of the Fireworks activating um, that gives 10% extra damage when you use a weapon skill that has a long cooldown. The description is actually a little bit wrong. It doesn't just activate on weapon skills. It activates on basically anything uh, that uses your weapon damage. And that is actually going to include the Soul Beast Beast Mode abilities here, as you can see. Basically, just like a flat 10% damage increase a lot of the time for this build in PvP, which you then, of course, can line up with your uh, Unblockable, with one Wolf Pack, and, of course, all of the massive burst damage this build brings to the table. So, a that? very popular build Red right now. Absolutely destroys stuff. Uh, currently, uh, in the matter, of course, using that relic of the rune of the spellbreaker and relic of fireworks, Draza, moving around, ready to skull grinder someone. Could this be it? Will we see? Will we see the skull grinder? We will not. Misha moving in here just to you know just to say hello, just to say hi. Bit of support there. Classic PvP player being completely encumbered the entire time. Obviously, a, a bit of a uh, of a one-sided match here. Uh, potentially the favourites of the entire tournament uh, going up against, you know, essentially a pug team. So that's not exactly going to give you, not going to yield the most exciting game in the universe. There we go! We saw it! I arrived a little bit too late, but that was a skull grinder. We saw the Relic of Akeem give an extra five stacks of confusion. What that Relic does is, it says whenever you land a CC, you disable an enemy, you get an extra... F oh my god, that is so disgusting. You get an extra five stacks of confusion AOE around your target, and I believe two Torment stacks as well. It is absolutely insane. So if you're able to land um, a crowd control effect on a target that already has confusion on it, or Torment, it will then spread that confusion around, essentially, and deal massive extra damage to your target. Incredibly strong on any build that has confusion and Torment access, which, of course, this build has both. It has Impale for Torment, and you, of course, also have a Skull Grinder that applies a lot of confusion. Red team wins a Lead into some pretty serious DPS. It's pretty wild stuff. Let's go and take a look. I want to see what the French are running, because, again, the French, very well known for their very interesting theory craft. Let's see if they've kind of cooked up anything special. Of course, we might see a couple of different builds uh, kind of get swapped in and swapped out. What, what, what is this? The game is lagging a little bit. Uh, and this is no surprise, guys. The French do like a slightly slower, more durable style. And we do actually see a Scourge. Uh, Avatar Amulet with Rune of the Dolyak. Dagger Focus. Of course, Dagger did get reworked, actually, to be, I think, a little bit more usable, especially in PvP. Alongside Staff. And it's going to be Soul Reaping, Blood Magic, and Scourge. Utilizing all of the new alacrity stuff alongside just, you know, the standard blood magic gaming, right? You know, you have transfusion, we have vampiric presence, uh, overflowing thirst, all that kind of good stuff. Nothing too crazy. And the normal soul reaping uh, setup there as well. So a bit more of a bunker style, a bit more of a tanky thing here. Kill on the Spectre. Again, very similar build as you can see here. Nothing too crazy. Ultimate Dark Worm on Vindicator. And uh, Vindicator is an interesting one. I think this is one of those builds that, honestly, not sure about it, but I guess we'll see how it plays out. Now, it does have access to Shortbow here, and Shortbow is a very good weapon in PvP, just in general. It always has been. It's one of the key things about the old Renegade builds, because, of course, this is now with Weapon Master training. So this does mean that we access this Shortbow Greatsword Renegade build. So a lot of range pressure. Uh, oh, I missed all the builds. We have a Spree there as well. Goku. Back in the mix, I imagine on Berserker. I guess the Spree is playing support guard, right? Uh, if I had to guess. No power specters? I mean, Syndrona must be playing. Uh, I don't know what team he's on, actually, but I imagine we are going to be seeing some of that gameplay in there. At some point. We actually have a five... Oh, five round! Actually, a short AT. I'm surprised it's not six, given its X-Pack launch. What about Josh's team? I think this is a bit of a blaster team as well. Yeah, once again, you are playing Reaper. Yeah, Necro, I still feel like it's in a bit of a rough spot. Aristocracy Relic being used for more condition duration. So just like, honestly, significantly more damage once you start to ramp up there. A lot of vulnerability on this build too, of course, with bit of chill. Yeah, Necro, I still think it's a little bit difficult. PMA until you feed. I do like that uh, that name there. Support God Falco on Spellbreaker. And we have alt account number infinite on the DPS Scrapper, I believe. Ah, uh, Sin isn't playing. Oh, that's unfortunate, actually. It'll be good to see, you know, some of the, uh, some of the old gamers kind of blasting. That would be fun. Okay, let's see what we got. 
Ah, uh, yeah, Relic of Ice is good, because you fire out all those icicles, you get a lot of Deathly Chill procs, because each icicle. Re Relic of the Ice, it fires out projectiles, icicles, when you use your elite skill, and they all apply chill, so very powerful. Garkos here, Unknown Thief, yep, there it is. Having a bit of a tough time here, actually. Ah, here we go. This is an exciting team as well, actually. We have Enigma, again, on the support guardian. We have Demolish on Holosmith. That's going to be, I think, a very similar build. What's that relic I saw there, actually? Was that Firework again? I think it may well have been the Firework relic. Not totally sure, though. On this build, we have um, Digital Ione on the Scrapper. Wolf Spider on the Untamed, as usual. Okay. Cinder's busy. Well, you know what? That is fair enough. Sometimes you are busy, and you cannot play the video game. These things happen. I'm um, a Maya scene. That also could be exciting. So I think the really big one... Uh, what, what's the big showdown here? It's going to be French versus 55. Uh, that's like the big story of this AT, actually. Not that many teams. We don't have Ultranum in here. Um, so it's going to be two main teams, I'd say. That are going to be battling uh, for victory. So we'll see how long it takes to get to that point. Oh yeah, what is the... I don't even know what the new Ranger pet does. I have no idea what it does. Well, it's like the Sand Shark, right? Let me see. Tame Sand Shark. What have we got? What have we got? Aether Hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what, let's see. Aether Hunter. Let's see, what does it do? Uh, dive between dimensions. Resurfacing at your foe's location and knocking them into the air. Interesting. Okay. Spin around, creating a vortex of ley line energy around you that strikes and inflicts conditions on enemies. Okay. Very interesting, very interesting. Are we done? Yep. This must be over, right? Is there a game still going? Alright. Oh, this is a very close game. Except actually, it's not. Red team is going to win. There's a kill there. PvP no about to go down state. And that's it. 500 to 363 in favor of the red team. There it is. Oh no, the chat is completely infested with viewbots. Gamers, if you are a viewbot, please put Mr. Destructoid in the chat so I can count all of you. I want to know exactly how many viewbots there are in the chat. It's important to know that. I want to get that information locked in. Beep boop. Reporting for duty. Indeed. Rise. Well, there you have it. Hmm. Okay. What is this team? Let's see what we got. I have no idea who these gamers are. Ah, we have a Zeolith team. This could potentially be a little bit, you know, this could be a team. This could be a, could be a game here. The Support Guardian. The Chronomancer. The Power Chronomancer, guys. Wow, look at all this DPS. There's a lot of damage. Like, I think a lot of these games are going to end up very explosive. We do have the Scourge build that's popped up. This is the same as the previous one. She's slightly different with um, Ritual of Life instead of the Overflowing Thirst. So less life force generation, more revival power uh, from this particular setup here. But uh, overall similar approach, I'd say, alongside the Spectre. Of course, there is going to be a Spectre here on the red team as well, and the Catalyst too. So a lot of the mainstays from the previous meta. Support Guardian here again from Misha. Yeah, I think a lot of these games are going to be very explosive. Because this is certainly something... This happens with all the expansions, right? But the big thing that tends to go up with expansions is always damage. And it seems there is a huge amount of damage. Hold on to your points. 
Z's there. In the current meta game. And that that does make me a little bit scared for the French, honestly. And anyone kind of going with this Scourge approach, which kind of was one of those builds that did emerge kind of late into Ender Dragons, actually, with the Alacrity rework. It does scare me a little bit because if there's too much damage, this type of style, it doesn't really work very well. Uh, you just die, right? And if you just die, then... You can't really bunker and be annoying. And you can kind of see that here, right? That this Scourge is just not really having a good time. All of the corruption, all of the defensive uh, abilities are being used right now. The support guard is available, of course, to get into the mix and try to keep this Scourge alive. But they've got to try and get some kind of counter pressure quickly. And it's going to be easier said than done. Instant Hanras comes through. It might have to be a Signet, though. It is. Is there interrupt? There is. The Thief gets the interrupt with the Siphon. They're going to go for that res. I'm not sure if they're going to get that, though. That's going to be very, very difficult. And... Yeah, you can see. Oh, the signal went off, but there was poison applied, so it's no good, unfortunately, to get that revive. And yeah, this is going to be a bit of a big victory for 55. They already have this 1v1 duel, and they secured the windmill immediately anyway, so 1v1 is going on there. Draza, of course, very good at 1v1, so I imagine we'll probably end up with the, uh, uh, the upper hand in this particular scenario. Here we go. Now, of course, there will be rotations coming in from 55 as they have just won that fight over there. And that means the Soul Beast is going to be moving in. I think we're just going to go straight for the Berserker here. Draz has already burned a lot of the cooldowns of that player, of course. So very vulnerable. We do have support coming back off uh, Respawn there, but it's going to be a little bit too late. There's no Signet. Reviving that would probably not be a very good idea with the amount of DPS available here. Yeah, and this is pretty... It's definitely pretty rough, I think, for Blue Team. They are not going to have a particularly good time. Uh, in Red this type of scenario. Point. Not ideal whatsoever. There you go. Yeah, it's going to be a 500-0 game. Let's go take a look at something else. Let's take a look at another particular matchup. Let's see what we got. Let's see what the French are up against. Hi, Mr. Teapot. It's me, your only viewer. For months, I've created the illusion that you are streaming to a large audience, but here's the truth. All these people in the chat are me. And now, for you to be convinced of this, I will send this message from all of my accounts. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I saw this really ridiculous meme recently, and it was, it was of Dr. Eggman saying something like, You buffoon. Like, <laughs> I have 72 alt accounts, or something like that. And I, I, I just thought that was pretty funny. And it wasn't even alt, it was, it was specifically alternative accounts. I just found that extremely funny. Like the idea that someone would, would you know... <laughs> so, so someone would ban one person. They go, ha ha, well, you didn't know. I have 72 accounts. Banning me does nothing. I'm simply back. I, I have returned already. There's nothing you can do, you fool. <laughs> it's good content. I like that. Anyway, we have an intense battle going on here. Uh, I don't actually know these players here on the blue team. But I certainly know the players here on the red team. And let's see how the Scourge actually works out when it goes a bit better. Because I imagine this will be pretty favored uh, towards our red team here. And again, the game plan here for red is it's going to be team fight a lot. Get value out of that Scourge. If the fights go long enough, if the Scourge is able to survive, it kind of adds a bit of that? inevitability. Because it's almost like having a lot of area pressure, a lot of um, damage reduction for the enemy team, and it breaks down the defenses by removing boons and so on. But it also is half a support. And that means the longer these fights go on, the more favorable the cooldown economy will go in, you know, in the direction of, um, of the red team here. It's kind of true of the Vindicator as well. The Vindicator also just has a little bit of support with the Salvation trait line. Some good damage, good AoE pressure here. See how this Vindicator build actually plays out. It's using Greatsword and Shortbow. So using the Renegade Elite Specialization Weapon alongside the Vindicator Elite Specialization Did Weapon on that? Vindicator. Red team got a capture point. Yeah. I mean, it's something is happening. We'll have to run away as there is a 1v2 situation coming in here with the Untamed moving into the mix. This node is going to be neutral for a while. Is there any kind of potential from the red team to contest this, to deny this? Looks like the Vindicator might be moving back. Scourge is also in play here. Looks like they might end up giving up the node. No, Vindicator does actually make it with a quick port in. And now that the Scourge is here, this is a bit of a brick wall here for blue. I don't think they'll be able to break through this. Both of these classes, pretty tanky actually, quite hard to get through. So I think it's going to be pretty hard to burst through. Having said that though, actually, never mind. 
Yeah, that Mirage, and this is uh, one of the new Mirage builds actually, doing massive damage uh, with a power damage. Oh, it's actually a Condi Mirage build. This lands a massive burst, instantly kills the Vindicator. Well, never mind. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm crazy here. Maybe I'm not insane, but I'm really not convinced by this Scourge approach, to be honest. Maybe uh, we'll see some magic happen later on in the tournament, but it just doesn't seem, doesn't seem to be going that good right now. Yeah. It's uh, not really working out. Well, there it is, I guess. Big damage from the Mirage. Unloading. Probably the Relic of Akeem. It's getting a big Shadow Combo, right? A like, big Shadow Combo with Inspiration, though, actually. Is being used here for a bit of durability on that build. And certainly, uh, Red Team is doing well here, right? Like, Red Team is, you know, obviously going to end up winning this game almost certainly, actually. But I'm going to be very interested to see how this actually plays out into Rank 55's composition. Uh, I, I kind of have a bit of a prediction that there's going to be a little bit too much damage for these builds to really absorb effectively. But you got a close game. Let's take a look at this. Let's get in there. So we actually have a very close game here between these two teams. With Red Team just barely wiping as we join in. Like, that's the kind of like, um, re you know, retroactive like caster that. curse there as we join in here. And Red Team immediately board. starts losing horribly. And actually in a lot of trouble here. Chronomancer for Red needs to hold on until Red respawns. Actually is able to do that. Gets the double gravity well going there as well. The Continuum Shift. Can they convert this into a kill? Blue Team may have overextended a little bit here. Oh, they definitely have. Gl <laughs> Glue Sniffer Gary ends up forcing the revival skill to be used by the Tempest. On the blue team. Here we go. And yeah, blue need to get out of here. Like, they, you do not want to be here right now. You have got to get the hell out. Relic of the Monk being used by uh, this Tempest for a bit of extra blue healing. Grab the capture point. Here we go. Tempest holds on. Keeps sustaining uh, this Herald over here. I think the Herald was almost inevitably going to fall. Does have Staff, so it's got a bit of evasion left over. No Glint Heal for a couple of seconds only. Yeah, that's going to be the end of that. There's no Revival here. And Red getting a good rebound here, I think. Might be able to pick up a couple of additional kills. Yeah, Blue need to start thinking about how they're going to disengage out of this fight. Otherwise, they're going to end up losing a lot of players and potentially swinging the game back against them. They're actually doing a pretty good job of holding, though, actually. This is a pretty slow fight, and Red are not quite able to burst through this. Yeah, not quite. In fact, it inverts. Yeah, blue held on long enough there. All of the damage cooldowns were gone, and then the Reaper got in there and really started dishing out some massive area of effect damage. Oh, it's a power Reaper too, so yeah, this build was absolutely blasting. Rune of the Lynx uh, with that Berserker Amulet doing very heavy damage with the Greatsword too, actually, so huge AoE damage. Very risky, very glass cannony, but it certainly paid off in that situation there as well, as there are very few things in the game that can withstand a fully juiced up Reaper. Okay, let's see how this game proceeds. Red team, they've got to get back in there. They've got to stabilize this and go from there. Let's see if they can make that happen. Here we go. So we have this 1v1, this duel over here between the Chronomancer and a... Uh, this is a Catalyst, I believe. Yep, it absolutely is. Catalyst here. Still a very powerful option in the 1v1. The Chronomancer probably won't have too much luck here. We do have the Thief moving in, though, and that can definitely change things up here. As, yeah, that Catalyst is going to fall over immediately. Do we have a Revival? We actually do not. There is no Revival available outside of the F press. But actually, hang on a minute. The Chronomancer actually went down to the Catalyst. We're in trouble here. Uh, Knockback does come through to deny that Revival, so I think we should see a victory here for the red team. Tempest kind of uh, overstaying their welcome potentially too will now be at severe risk of dying on their way back to the middle node. Tempest, of course, pretty durable class though. Has some of that protection access. Of course, the bonus strength protection as well. Keeping this build nice and healthy as they make it back in there. And blue, they've held on to the map here. Red of they, they've been really stalled by the last couple of fights, losing this Berserker as well. They're down a player. They need to just restabilize, have five players on the board and get a proper push going on. It's starting to get to the stage of the game where even a small mistake can be very hard to recover from as we get up to the 400 point threshold for the blue team. So red, they need to play this out perfectly. They're in a good spot right now, to be honest. They're about to pick up this Reaper. There is a revive, but I don't think they're going to get it. Oh, they do actually. That was a really good line of sight there and a good clutch usage of the water revival. Actually, the Thief from Red is down. This, ooh, the Tempest is kind of carrying here, actually. Some good play from this Blue Tempest. Putting in a lot of work. 
getting those heals, getting those revives, and swinging that fight very nicely. If they just got that cleave, it would have been massive, but it's not going to happen. Um, this is gonna looking very scary now, I think, for the red team. Their deficit is starting to become a little bit insurmountable. Some good support there from the support. Again, trying to keep the Scourge like this double well available, so that should probably be enough to shut down the Reaper, at least for a little bit, but... Yeah, this is scary. I, d I don't really see Red Team having enough time to actually push back out onto the map and actually reclaim this game. It's not looking likely to me. We actually have a Colony Reaper too. Relic, uh, Rune of the Sunless. Rune of the Sunless, not Relic of the Sunless. It's, it's, look, I'm still learning, okay? We've got, a, we've got a lot of catching up to do, guys. The game is different now. Relics all over the place. If only I could actually see them. Wouldn't that be great? If I could actually see the relics in the UI. Oh, wait, I can't, and I'm pretty sad about it, but that's okay. Then we've got to go check out another game. I think, um, well, you know what? No, let's give, let's give Red one more chance. We've got to check this out. It's, it's possible. You know, if this, this Herald's about to die, maybe. Maybe the Red Catalyst ends up dying. Red team actually do have this. And I do like this push. This is a good push from Red. They do end up dying, though. They only have a two players here compared to the three of blue. So this warrior needs to do some pretty miraculous kiting. Kind of needs to hold 1v3 here and just troll um, while the rest of his team is actually able to rotate over. Looks like that might end up happening. Giving up that node is very painful, though. Certainly does not want that to happen. And actually, this Condi Reaper is consistently pressuring the Berserker. Really just might have a hard like time that. getting out of this. Need support now. Oh, the cutoff there by the other Reaper too. Is there a signet available from the support gun? There actually is not. It's going to have to be a hand rest. This is a very scary hand rest too. There's no stability. There is stability now, but this is going to hurt. Oh, does manage to get it before the tornado arrives. Uh, but no, the thief is downstate again here. There's no way this is recoverable. This game is totally over. Right, next match. Let's move. Uh, what else have we got going on? Oh, I guess it's actually kind of like the uh, bit of the end of the match actually. Or end of the round. These are going a little bit quicker than the last one. There is this one game, uh, uh, this game going on, but this one's actually nearly over too. Ooh, yeah, this one is totally over. Revit Boom Blaster, one of the most powerful players in all of EU ranked. Mechanist, all day, every day, mech only. Red team wins a capture point. Oh, we have this gamer as well. We have the Mirage. The Shield Mirage. Enjoy it. You love to see it. Boom, done. Dancing Choi Gang, secure that victory. There it is. Very, very big. Let's continue. Yeah, we need Dartbringer to add a relic thing real quick. See, which other game is continuing? I guess this one. Oh, no, that one just ended. Oh, yeah, it's just the one we were, we were already in. We have to wait until the end. Red team making their valiant last stand. They're, oh, they're kind of doing it, actually. Could I have actually cursed the blue team? I and mean, this is doable. Oh, no, it's not doable. Just like oh. that, blue team takes a capture okay, it's not doable. That would have been an ep that could have been an epic comeback. And the Berserker was honestly desperately trying to make it. But unfortunately, the Reaper just goes, you know what? We just need this one node. I'm going to go stand on it. See that? And Red they win the game. Got a capture point. That would have been pretty big, actually. If they'd pulled that off, if the Berserker had made it there just a couple of seconds earlier, they would have held, they would have got res. They could have actually had, like, a big team fight and maybe uh, swung the game. Would have been tricky, but it was their only hope. All right. Here we go. Do we have a big match? Um... I think this one could be interesting, actually. Let's get in here. Let's go. Let's investigate what's going on. Okay. Oh. Ah, okay. This. Okay, okay. We actually do... Uh, this is a very solid team. Actually, this could be a very exciting game. Fly Low XDD. Nice. Uh, on the Support Guardian. Fly High XDD. This is going to be Fly, uh, playing the Daredevil. Caspi, Chronomancer. Big DPS here, Dragon Hunter. Probably Fireworks Ring, I'd say, for even more damage output. Floody, Holosmith, Hammer. Actually, going to be using the Scrapper Elite Spec weapon here. We do love to see that as well. Of course, Hammer, I think, are both a popular weapon and a very powerful weapon. Gives you some great defensive and offensive potential, alongside some mobility stuff there with the Holosmith. Gornet on Scourge. Again. Yeah, well. 
Let's see how that one works out. It does have feed from corruption uh, instead of uh, sandstorm trap. We've seen a lot of players opt for that, but it's going to be feed from corruption, so the extra barrier. This will give you a lot of barrier. You know, you can kind of plonk down your well of corruption uh, and you know use your various corruption abilities with the dagger and the focus on boon removal abilities, and that will certainly generate a seriously good chunk. Uh, of barrier and sustain for this build, helping it keep alive very easily. All right, here we go. And yeah, it's going to be a, kind of like the hybrid build, the Sage build. This is very reminiscent of the really old school Scourge builds. Utilizing the Snake, that Aegis. More corruption, of course. Big Snake gameplay. Healing power from that Sage amulet will funnel the barrier on Sandflare quite nicely too. So this also might be a pretty interesting one. Of course, paired with that support guard, this is a very hard duo to get rid of. There's a good chunk of mobility here as well. It's almost a little bit lacking in 1v1 potential, actually. Like, it's a um, pretty aggressive uh, composition. Just like that, Probably quite team fight oriented from the red team here. Going up against their opponents, the French. Also operating that Scourge, a slightly different build though again, using that Sandstorm Shroud for that extra protection. Bit of AoE barrier there as well. Let's see how this actually ends up faring. I think on paper, I would say that the team that's going to have like, oh, nice uh, jumping puzzle there. That's going to have a bit more coordination and synergy that? is probably going to be um, the board. blue team. There's definitely a lot of unknown variables here. These fights are going to be very difficult to predict, given the uh, you know the volatile nature of the current metagame uh, right now. Goku actually having a tough time into this 1v1 against that um, Holosmith there from Floody. Floody really putting in some work there uh, against the Berserker, dealing very heavy damage. Has to be extremely careful to dodge all of those um, Akeem Relic uh, activations on Skull Grinder, but does a bit of pull that off. And the Thief actually finds Goku first blood. Oh no, first blood actually goes to the, uh, the blue team as the Chronomancer has been eliminated, and Gorn, it might be next, actually. Is there any defensive ability? We have a Corruption Well up in a couple of seconds. That is going to be needed here. Do we have a Revive available? Uh, we do not, actually. It's already been used. The Hand Res is immediate, but it's not going to have some good CC there from the blue team. We'll immediately deny that Revival. And yeah, first team fight is going to end up going towards that blue team. Red team, though, of course, and this is kind of what you see with these more experienced teams. They're very good at dispersing these fights. They immediately retreat. They immediately back out and are able to uh, manage the map quite effectively, that? denying Red too much of a loss here, even finding themselves with this node up. Now, they're going to have to concede blue this immediately. We have three blue players board. pushing in. Fly High has now arrived. So they can start... Whoa! Okay. Yeah, that Firework rune and that Thief, you know, it's, it's a big deal. You might not think 10% extra damage is a lot, but seriously, when, it's, when that 10% is applying to your entire burst or your entire burst window, that 10% starts to add up quickly. So this Thief build able to land a massive burst and just completely delete that Chronomancer uh, of kill off the face of the Earth. Again, using Inspiration and Illusions. It's going to be the choice here. With the uh, Staff and the Sword Shield. Relic of the, uh, Rune of the Scholar. And then Berserker Amulet. Just for massive, massive damage output on this particular build. Floody now in trouble. You know, Goku has found the answer there. Is able to hold his own very nicely in that 1v1. And actually, now Floody's in a little bit of difficulty here. Get some good line of sighting, but desperately needs a heal skill. Doesn't have it just yet. We'll have it in a couple of seconds. Some very good kiting, actually, by the Engineer. Able to get away. Nice redirect there on the uh, Hammer 3 to actually get back into the mix. Very evasive. Very slippery. Might just barely get out of that. Oh, dodges the immobilized. Tries to hold on. But no, it's not going to be enough. Runs into additional French players. And Floody is going to go down. Mm, and yeah, there, there seem to be... It seems to be very difficult for Red Team to take a fight. They don't appear to be comfortable in the team fights. And as of right now, the Blue Team have just been around on the map. They've been present where they've got to be. Yeah, a bit of a tricky one. Bit of a tricky one. And here come the buffs. Uh, red team picked up the sword, but they're losing players right now, so they're not going to get a lot of value out of the sword. Shield was grabbed for blue too, making them a little bit harder to take down overall. And kill mage in a bit of trouble here. It's looking tricky. Okay. See what's going on here. The fight's going to begin, but I don't see much of a pathway for Red to win it. They're going to have to just either stall it or disengage. It looks like they're going to try and disengage. Things are looking a little bit scary currently, I think, for Red. Red the score is still definitely point. pretty close, and Goku's going to have to back off him. As you see Gornet, or rather uh, Caspi, actually pick up a node over there, which is pretty good. Getting two on the board now. 
And Goku is going to have to retreat away from there. Goku goes down. However, I think the problem is, is that once these fights start to resolve, Blue will be able to get back in control. And there we go. Fly low has been taken out. The anchor of the support eliminated. That leaves Gornet very exposed. Already seeing the Guardian move back over here to help out uh, Azaz, the ultimate dark worm in this main fight here on middle. There it is. Vindicator. I'm not... I'm not totally sure what the purpose of this build is, to be honest, you know, like maybe, I'll, maybe we'll see as we proceed through the tournament. I guess it's kind of like a, more of a, like a, a 1v1 thing that also can do some damage. It's not that fast, though, so it's not much of a roamer, I feel like, but I guess it can be the, kind of like a bit of a teamfight presence. Pretty heavy AoE damage on this. Kill Mage in a bit of trouble. But actually, red team... They're making some work out of this. They're, they're doing a good job of just dissolving these fights so these big team fights aren't happening where they seem to not do super well. And just leveraging that thief. Ooh, the thief, well, as I say, that thief dies instantly. Uh, does get revived, though. That's the good news. I believe that was the shield actually popping off there. Oh, no, it was the signet, in fact. The shield was indeed not going on. So just getting some value out of that thief. Of course, a great map for thief in general. Very high, uh, high mobility map. Now they're going to turn that round. Of course, is there one of those key moments there? Once you get a revive or you get a kill, you can rebound in these fights very effectively. That's exactly what happens. And all of a sudden, red team looking to be in a very, very powerful position here, really pushing away this Revenant. Revenant is almost certainly going to die. Actually, that Chronomancer very much on the hunt. Great sort of order attacks ticking away. Blink and mobility is enough. And there's another kill secured. Core Guard falls as well. Let's see if Red Team can capitalize on this. They're going to get themselves at least two nodes here and an artifact as well. One did get snagged immediately for the blue team, though the sword is pretty good. But again, they have two players about to die. So they're actually getting relatively minimal value on that. The Chronomancer is going to be happy with it, but not much else, at least for the time being. And Red have got themselves full map control, at least for the time being. They're not going to push their luck, though. They don't want to overextend. They're just going to say, you know what? We've got our two nodes. We're going to see what you do. We're going to force you to make some rotations here while we start to get into the lead. That's exactly what happens. They actually have a kill that's still not there for a while. Bear in mind, blue can't really fight without that support guard, and red know that. So if red are able to actually pick off a kill now, that is huge. That could be potentially, you know, be 50 plus points if they're able to actually secure one of these players before there is support. Blue very wisely not over aggressing them while they wait for the guardian to actually return. Uh, Guardian doesn't get the port through the wall, unfortunately. And that actually might be very, very bad for Goku. It's going to force a revive, but actually the cleave is way too much. That is over. Ooh, and the Signet got burned as well. Wow, this is really bad for Blue. They're down a player, down a really key support tool as well. Uh, Red are going to pick themselves up a very significant lead here. It's going to be a very big lead coming up. Potentially even 100 points. Ooh, and the Thief, yeah. Fly was able to sneak around. Gets a massive kill onto kill. Revive is being utilized here. But look at that Firework Rune damage. It is absolutely massive. I don't see that being revivable. Floody now moves in with the Cleave too. Holosmith um, and with Hammer. So massive AoE damage is there. And Blue just kind of huddling in a corner trying to hold on. But it's going to be a long time before they're actually able to take these fights. The Scourge will be available, but... That's only in 10 seconds, 15 seconds from now. Chronomancer is back. They've got to wait for that Scourge before they can really take that fight, though. It's all five players from Red Team. I think, wait, Blue might just be dead in the water. They're going to lose their Vindicator now as well. Vindicator about to go down, I think. Support player is available, though, of course. And now we actually do see uh, the Scourge come back. But cooldowns have already been burnt a lot from this Blue Team. So I'm not sure how much this Scourge is actually going to be able to uh, prevent the, the, you know, the, the oncoming storm here. The oncoming tide of red. Well, as I say that, it is actually kind of working. The, uh, the pressure gets turned around very much onto that Chronomancer. The block is activated. Ooh, not going to be able to get that off once again. Signet of the Ether, the heal skill interrupted. Very nice blink there, actually, but it's not going to be quite enough. Is there a revival? There actually is. Is it going to be used? It does, but Chrono still in a lot of trouble. Does manage to get the heal score, but is it going to be enough? I don't think so. A very good rebound there by Blue. Some coordinated usage of cooldowns. Able to reset that fight there quite nicely. That was a very nice attempt there. I like that. that oh, that way. What the fuck was that? Some crazy Vindicator shenanigans going on there as Floody ends up falling too. Oh, Blue Team going for a bit of a comeback there. Red Team getting very heavily punished by that overextension. They were not able to secure that extra kill. And this is certainly an opening. There's now an opening for Blue Team to maybe get back into this. 
Uh, Goku immediately goes for this push. We're now contesting to the Chronomancer. Probably not exactly much fun for the Chrono here. However, we do have support and the Necromancer moving as well. Three Just players like for that, Goku. Blue team takes a capture point. He's honestly not super upset about that. Because uh, again, like holding this many players in this position, as long as he doesn't die, as long as he's able to hold on in some way, it's not actually going to be that bad. And now the blue team does support. They're able to move in here. Now, this is a little bit annoying, though, as the red team, they kind of only care about this node. So we do need to see some kind of way to split up the uh, the blue, the red team here a little bit, or they just need to flat out win this fight. Looks like that's what just they're going to be going like for that. again, trying to get rid of that Chronomancer. Killmage, though, does die here on the middle node. Fly high XDD picks up that kill, finds that kill, and finishes it off. And this is going to be very, very bad here for blue, unfortunately. The Scourge is in the down state. The damage is not enough to actually get that cleave out. But again, too many players here. This fight is already not really going the way of red team here whatsoever scourge about to fall yeah the high damage output there's a lot of damage on this red team and this is certainly where builds like scourge um kind of struggle a little bit i'd say builds like the vindicator also struggle there's there's too much burst damage uh going out for them to really generate their full value and we kind of see that exactly with the composition of red team here a lot of damage output across all of these builds the only kind of um build that isn't a support that's a little bit slower is the scourge and that's going to be that red team about to finish the game Wow. Yeah, I didn't actually see the team. I didn't know it because nobody ever uses uh, non-unhinged team or account names anymore. So you never know what you're getting into when you join one of these games. But there it is. Pretty exciting matchup there, I think, actually. And there it is. GG. Red team get it. And I think they're going to be the ones facing rank 55 in the next round rather than the French that we were perhaps expecting. What a pretty good game over here, actually. Two, ooh, 273 to 273 on the red team. I always do enjoy seeing this name, guys. It is going to be You Are Delusional on the Reaper. We, what the hell is this? We have a Scrapper, and they're playing Scrapper. We have Million Falco. Falco, also known by his account name, Rocket Launcher, with some letters in caps, some others not in caps. Malgus, PMA until you feed, Support Guardian, and Skog X on the Thief. Going to be the Daredevil here. Utilizing Dagger Pistol and Shortbow. That Rune of Vampirism for some power and vitality to stay a little bit alive on the blue team. It is the Floor team. Cat Floor on the Condition Damage Berserker. We have Vagabond on the other Condition Damage Berserker. We have Throw God of PvP Chrono on the Thief. We have Ginger, also known as Adult, Adult Baby. On the, this is like the D-Gen build, by the way. Axe, Shield, Scepter, Torch, Virtuoso. This is the Cancer. Obviously, near infinite blocks, very high durability, very high sustain, a lot of self-healing. And of course, a lot of just condition damage pressure coming out from all of these weapons and the Shatter skills are activating. And Azadome. Also known as the leader of the Azadome Academy, formerly known as the as Azadome School of Shooting. <laughs> known very well for his Deadeye gameplay. Anything changed in the Deadeye world? Yeah, not looking like it so much. Gonna be just the rune of infiltration. Bit of power and precision. And we have the normal build, I think, being used. Yeah, Deadeye, very tricksy. It's gonna be this weird thief dance here where they're both trying to steal the uh, the uh, the artifact. A little bit tricky to get though. When you have so much mobility and disengage. Ooh, Azam nearly landed a massive attack there, actually. Just stealth at the last second, I think, denying some of that hit. So far, though, blue team just very narrowly ahead. Let's see how some of these fights are proceeding. Here on middle, of course, the Reaper existing does make it quite hard for basically anything to survive, as long as they're even on even numbers. Ginger's going to go down here, I think. Yep, there's the kill. It's going to be Pistol Dagger as well. So we have a Pistol Dagger on Reaper. Not surprising, actually. I'm almost surprised not to see the Torch, but I think that this is being used for the weakness. The weakness application is actually really important. There's Reaper, especially in the current metagame, is really going to need that weakness to actually survive and just mitigate the damage of the opponent. Alongside, of course, that excellent blinding condition transfer. But I think Torch might be something that does get experimented with on a wide variety of Necromancer builds. As it's simply a very solid uh, weapon just for damage output in general. Yeah, Reaper now having to 1v1 though. This is definitely a little bit pain. Uh, we'll be struggling here a lot. Does have a lot of transfers, which certainly is quite nice actually. Suffer, of course, transfers. The dagger as well on staff. So there's a lot going on. Oh, that was a really nice elite. That was a huge elite. Whoa! That was a big play there from You Are Delusional. 
teleports back with the elite. Floor thought he was out of range, but actually wasn't because of the spectral port. That actually is a huge deal. Getting rid of that Berserker off the map is massive. Now, the question is, can they find more? The other Berserker also in a particularly vulnerable position here. Let's get some of the kiting off there. Falco will resume that 1v1. Okay, there it is. 400 points, basically a piece. Ooh, Red Thief did actually end up falling. Certainly not ideal, and that means Asdom was able to actually pick up that, um, that artifact too. So this Deadeye is going to be doing an absolutely obscene amount of damage output. So it's going to be a case of, can our red team just hold on there? Their Thief is now back, and if they can secure a kill here, this might be enough to get them into a very strong winning position. Oh, and they are going to get that. Yeah, look at the damage on all these builds. That Berserker never saw a chance. Couldn't get to the high ground in time. And now this is a big deal. This Berserker is going to have to back off. Or oh, your Delusional's in a bit of trouble, though. Where's the support? Is the Signet here? Oh, not quite in time. The Guardian is going to go for it and try and hold. No, no, no. Can't do that. No, no, no. Yeah, I like that call, actually, from the Guardian. Red team are ahead, though. So as long as they actually don't allow this node to be captured, they are perfectly okay. And, of course, their team has now arrived, so they're able to do that very competently. We now have that Thief 1v1 yet again over here on that same artifact. It might not resolve before the end of the game, actually, because, again, it can be very, very slow with these Thief matchups. All of the constant disengaging in Thief. Ooh, but hang on a minute. Falco in trouble. The Reaper's getting back into the mix, but is it going to be in time to save this warrior? There's the full count. That's a nice one, too. Is it going to be enough, though? No, it is not. Ooh, and this Reaper is now going to be in one hell of a situation. No life force as well. Just came back off respawn. That is not ideal whatsoever. Has a lot of bleeds being applied. It Can this Reaper hold on? Needs to get into another shroud there. Oh, that's a vengeance, I think. Yeah, vengeance from Falco. I actually kind of like that. That will really help this um, this Reaper just live for a little bit longer. Big decap there by the Red Thief. Throw got a BB actually bled out to the Condies. Oh, no. That is very unfortunate. A complete bleed out there. And of course, that kill is highly valuable. Falco does down, but no rally actually on Throw God of PvP. There's that kill now secured. And I think Red Team should end up having this. You are delusional as hell on long enough against that Berserker. The Scrapper is now here. And yeah, all Red Team have got to do is just not feed Primp. They don't actually care about middle. They don't care about far. They just need this one node. They're simply going to send all of their respawns here. And they should be able to get away with this pretty easily. Yeah, this should be good to go, actually. Yep, 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 yep. Here it is. Yeah, that was uh, some big plays in this game, actually. Pretty exciting matchup. 495 to 5 to 464. And that'll be the end of that. Guardian does end up collapsing on middle, but it's way too late for the blue team, I'm afraid, for them. The game ends. Red team secures victory. That's it. No brain, world versus world main. That is actually pretty funny. I like that. Well, there it is. Okay, next round. I think we got one more round. Ah, uh, oh, no, I think there's two more rounds, right? Yeah. Okay, let's see where we're going next. What matchup do we want to see? Who is Mamaya's playing with, actually? The Condies keep ticking. They always do. Oh, yeah, it's this team. Yeah, this is the Mamaya's team, of course, yeah. Of course. It's confusing. Everyone's got confusing names. You know, this could be an interesting game. This team was actually able to defeat the French. So it's definitely worth looking at. Let's see if uh, this team can pull this off. And honestly, it's a good map for it. Again, if you're a Necromancer player, you're always happy to see Skyhammer. Relatively small map. So that, again, um, it doesn't punish you for your limited mobility so much. Especially on Scourge, which is very, very slow. And also some very good kiting positions. Uh, especially, well, I was going to say especially around mid. But honestly, just in general, it's very, very good. So Necromancer typically has a bit of an easier time surviving uh, on this matchup. On this uh, map in particular. It's going to be hard, though. Again, on red team, it's Misha. On Support Guardian, Frey on Catalyst, Hammer Catalyst here with Marauder and Doliak Rune. Maya, Spectre, Carrion with Rune of the Revenant. Boyce, Zan, number one, Simp. On the Soul Beast. Misha today at 12-1. I'm pugging with some other people already. Ooh, dude. Misha saying he's pugging, but then playing with a full tryhard roster. That is a big expose. Exposed. And draws up on Berserker here with that rabbit amulet with Rune of the Trapper, Relic of Akeem. Going to be pumping for this build. 
Relic of the Fireworks here for the Untamed, or rather the Soul Beast. But Blue Team also got a good roster. We have Support Guard from Myers. We have Fly on Thief, Caspi on Chronomancer, Floody on Hollowsmith with that hammer, and Gornet on Scourge. I, I don't even know how this is going to go. Who's going close for Blue? Yeah, I guess they, I think they were sending Floody last time, but they might just try and fully muscle this team fight, or are they going to go for a far push? Let's see what the actual rotations are going to be. Frey simply going for the very standard rotation of going to point C, while we actually have Draza going for the push. We do actually have a counter push coming through from Floody and from Fly, but nothing actually can to contest Draza. And I think this actually might be very calculated, because they know that none of their builds can actually handle that Berserker very well. Uh, and that might be why they're doing this. And this is where they're going to go immediately for Frey and try and get rid of Frey. But actually, Misha responds instantaneously. And the invulnerability from the Earth Shield does allow some very good reset into the counter pressure onto the Thief. Uh, so I do like the idea from Blue, but I have to say, actually, Red handled that very well and responded appropriately immediately. So that was actually very nice play, I think. Um, from, that? well, both Red teams, team but I do think ball. that Red Team ends up getting a little bit of the upper hand here. Now, Maya in trouble, about to get blasted by the Chrono, just barely wriggles away in the nick of time. Does run into another Thief, though. This is a little bit scary, actually. Only 3,000 health left over. Good evasion is being used, though, using that initiative just to create bigger evade windows so the Thief can't just, like, pounce and go for that kill. Red Team... They've really started to establish themselves, though. Getting a kill on Floody. They already have both side nose locked in. They're about to get mid. Yeah, this is actually looking very, very bad. 55. 55 looking good. 55 is looking good. Hmm. It's actually looking... It's looking very tricky, isn't it? Well, let's see, though. The, uh, the early, I think the early portion of the game is actually usually very difficult for a comp a bit like Blue. Uh, you know, they do want to try and get some kind of stability getting that necromancer like early game can be rough as necro right you want to make sure you get kind of properly set up and you know bunker down on one of these nodes and just you know sit there like a toad um but i don't think 55 really gonna allow that whatsoever are they no they are not going to allow that thief goes down here god's gonna go for the revive does get it but i mean this fight is i don't think it's really workable for blue whatsoever hmm no, I mean, it's not. It's definitely not workable. Although, actually, we do actually have Boyce go down state here. Boyce ends up falling there. Gets caught in the gravity well, I believe. Unable to live. See if blue team is going to be able to rebound. Some good disengages coming through here. Misha should end up falling, though. I tried to port back up, I think. I'll go for a bit of a juke. Didn't quite get it. Red team disengages pretty nicely, though. We already have the catalyst moving to point A. We'll have to give up that note, though. A lot of players from blue have rotated over. As you can see, though, the points... Very scary. Uh, pretty big advantage in favor of red. And no node captures yet either. We did actually have um, Frey continuously just being annoying over here. Does eventually fall over, so Floody will pick that up. And Misha still bleeding out, actually, so very annoying. Uh, we will have the Guardian back in about 10 seconds. Frey will take a while to actually bleed out before he can kind of get on that respawn timer as well. Draza forced to actually go for a 1v2 on the hammer. This Chronomancer, very annoying actually. That gravity well being used to extremely good effect here. Ooh, can the warrior get the heal? Yeah, goes to the portal. We'll then go back to continue uh, contesting that. And yeah, Chronomancer, of course, this is a very aggressive build. So quite vulnerable, uh, usually especially to conditions as well, actually. No inspiration trait line. So essentially no cleanse, very hard to deal with. Uh, we actually do have Boyce go down again. And of course, it is pretty glassy comp, right? Like the, um, you know, the Soul Beast build does a lot of damage, but its defenses are relatively limited compared to some of the other options. And again, this Chronomancer, these Mesmer builds doing a huge amount of damage currently. Wow, look at that output. That is crazy. That greatsword burst completely connects it from the blue Mesmer. However, the support was here to very much uh, moderate and reduce that damage and get Just those players like staying back up again. So, support paying off here for the red team. And yeah, now they know they've got to get rid of this Chrono. They go they go for it. They pounce the Scourge. Actually, kind of dies in the crossfire. They're going for the res. I think I'm going to get that. I very much doubt that. There's so much damage here from the red team. Gravity Well does go down here. The CC is massive. And all of blue team just gets completely obliterated into the meat grinder. Fly high XDD, running away from the scene. We do actually have some node captures in favor of blue during all of that, or at least at least one. Uh, Boyce now dealing with that on point B. Hammer being captured, and yeah, 55. 
unsurprisingly, doing very well in a lot of these fights. Yeah. A little bit of tomfoolery. A little bit of, uh, bamboozlement there. Oh, yes. And that's how it is. 55, now restabilizing. Frey, just being about the place. Just, you know, existing over here. Did you see that? Red team got a capture point. Gets the shield up. Lives. Doesn't die. They've got to be a little bit careful here. You know, they've got to watch out for that Chronomancer. Anywhere where the Chronomancer is, they don't want to go too crazy. They don't, they don't want to, you know, go a little too unhinged. You can end up getting punished. And yeah, this Catalyst getting focused very, very hard, actually. Taking massive damage currently. Spectre and Guardian will be available for support, though. And you can see a lot of healing coming through from both of those players. Keeping everyone alive, at least for the time being. Oh, it's going to be Maya that she gets focused. Spectre, definitely one of the softer targets, actually, uh, in the PvP meta right now. And yeah, the Chronomancer just being a big playmaker. Really locking in a lot of these kills. Big interrupt there, actually. Denies the use of the jump pad. Bit of a weird gimmicky thing. You can interrupt people, they can't use the jump pads. It's exactly what just happened there. And some of these fights definitely a little bit scary for 55. The problem is that blue team, they aren't able to get enough of them dead at the same time or essentially keep pushing these fights while rotating simultaneously. And this is definitely the advantage that these very, very experienced teams usually have. They're able to not just fight, but also be moving around the map while simultaneously fighting. And that's the mark of strength, the mark of power from these teams. So even though red team, they are losing a couple of players here. Frey now goes down. Uh, Draza obviously going to find himself in a, a very difficult situation. Look at where blue is. Blue is not really pushing towards these nodes. Boyce is essentially guarding B and C simultaneously. Hammer is actually not really going the way of blue team either. Blue are very locked on their side of the map right now. The thief is trying to go across and I do like that actually. Uh, Draza eventually dies. So there's nothing to guard point C. And nothing to, uh, to pressure point A as well, but it's uh, it's a long road to recovery for the blue team, you know? It's a long road to recovery. Signet comes through onto Maya there. Another victim of the Chronomancer burst. I think it's going to be very interesting to actually see if 55 find a bit of an answer to this, because right now it, it has kind of been going unanswered. This Chronomancer is just getting so much value, just continuously doing insane damage to all of these targets. And it does appear that actually there is a little bit of difficulty of survival here. Uh, you know, you can you can outheal many things on Support Guardian, but Chronomancer does not appear to be one of them, that's for sure. Oh, big knockback there as well, almost denies Misha escaping. Chronomancer continuing the assault onto the Mesmer, onto the Guardian rather. Might actually be able to get this kill. Needs to kite a little bit. Going to try and go back to the hammer, I think. Yeah, I like that. It was very good decision making there by Misha. Certainly the best possible way to survive. Might end up just conceding here, though, and saying, you know what? I live long enough. You know, I've uh, I've done enough. That's it. Draza is now going to maybe make it in there and chain. But 55 have got to be a little bit careful here. They're starting to actually bleed out a little bit too much. They've lost control of the map. They're down their support for a while. They have got everything neutral. Okay. So that is something. We get another kill. And this is kind of what blue team needs. Two kills at the same time. Now that gives you a little bit of leeway, a little bit of potential to get something done. Doesn't go for the stomp there, and this is very wise. You want to make sure that these players are dead for the longest amount of time possible. They've got to be a little bit careful. They don't want to let any kind of revival happen here, of course. Uh, particularly as the support guard is now back. There is no Signa, but you certainly have to be cautious when you know that that Guardian is coming back into play. Blue team now picking up maybe a second node here as well. Massive burst from Boyce landing onto uh, Caspi, but Caspi, of course, able to... Yeah, you know, not being too much pressure. There's two players from blue. Red team wins a capture. But now everyone from red is back. And red, you know, they played it safe for a bit. Didn't go for any kind of crazy push. And now we're going to see the response from rank 55. Let's see what's about to happen here. Spam this thumb for Ultra Numb. Let's do it. Well, they certainly are going to need it. They're a bit down here, but they do actually have that double cap. Bear in mind, guys. Uh, you know, there are not many teams that can beat 55. It's, you know, like Ultra Numb is certainly one of the teams that can. And even though this isn't full Ultra Numb, still some very formidable players. Kind of across the board here. Okay, and let's see this fight. Oh, a lot of damage going on to Misha there. That Scourge really putting in the work, unleashing the uh, full fury of corruption there. That Ghastly Breach doing heavy damage and really mitigating the defensives of that Guardian. Okay, and they're actually holding on pretty well here. Chronomancer having a good time kiting around on this middle node. 
Ooh, a lot of pressure though. Where's the support for Gornet? He's gonna need it now. Yeah, here comes Fly Low XED. Ooh, and the Crotomancer does get eliminated, of course. Certainly by now, 55 will be very well acquainted with how much damage this builds can do, and they'll try and get rid of it as quick as they possibly can, and they do. And without that, I think it's gonna be very hard for uh, Blue Team to punch through any of these targets here on this fight, at least for the time being. And Red, back in control, back in the driving seat, as it were, of this particular game. But there you go. I think this is a bit of a weird situation now. Boyce actually going for the 1v2. Is he actually going to lock in this 1v2? Ooh, doesn't quite commit to it. Yeah, I was very worried about the thief, I think. Saw that Floody was very, very low, but almost perceived it as bait, right? That thief probably would have secured the kill if he tried to finish that off. So he might have been able to generate a down state on the opponent there, but of course that's not good enough. Oh well, yeah, this is actually a little bit scary. Boyce is a little bit low on juice currently, and Fly, a very formidable thief player, can be very scary if you're low health and low on cooldowns. Um... No matter what class you're playing, actually. Yeah. What was that? What, what was this? Like, it was spam in the chat today. Completely unhinged. Okay, and Caspi's going to get shot down. There it is. And Maya patrolling around. Flylow and Gornet are not going to have the damage to push back into this fight. Not going to be quite good enough. Red team wins a capture point. I think 55. Just going through the end of this game now. Uh, a really good effort though, actually, I think, um, from the blue team. There was definitely some very good moments here, like notably this middle stage of the game where they were able to pick up a lot of these kills in sequence. And you can you can certainly see that, Did you see that? unsurprisingly, when you start to get kills, you start winning the game. Especially kills in quick succession as well. That's the important thing. Like getting a kill here and there, that's not good enough. You've got to... You gotta make sure that there's at least a couple of them off the board so you can really push onto the map. Because a team like this, team like Red Team, if you only get one of them, it's not gonna be good enough. Uh, it's not gonna be good enough unless you already control the map. If you already have map control, then it will be. But if you don't, it is not good enough. You need to make sure that you are really punishing the enemy team sufficiently so you can take control of the map and get something on the map. Get on the node and go big. Did you see that? Red team got a capture point. That's it. That's how it is. And 55. They get it They get it done. They win. I'm actually not sure if we have another round after this. We may have another round. Have well, this might be the final. Let me go into the eliminations shortly. Ah, there was actually a very close match here between XXXXX and Spocka. Ooh. Comeback hype. Oh, look at this. This is actually prototype. Zenvo. Ah! Now, that's something you don't see every day, guys. Wooden potatoes here, actually. Lord Chicken and Marilyn. Oh, that's a big red. This could be an insane comeback. Hang on. This is insane. This is absolutely massive here from Blue Team. Oh, no. The scrapper goes down again. Oh, they can't afford that. Can they res that somehow? It's going to be difficult. Zembo trying to go for it. Trying to counter pressure. Oh, this is bad. If this node gets capped, it's over for blue. They have to hold it. They have no choice. They must stand on this node. The Guardian's got nothing left, though. And those five points are going to end the game. Cranel finishes it. That's actually um, a very weird one. Because, of course, Zenbo and Cranel, former teammates here. Uh, Willbender. Uh, not with the longbow, actually. That build has been popping up a little bit. It's not good enough. And that's it. Red team gets the win. That's how it is. It's over. And let's see what happens. Is that going to be elimination or have we got another round? Let's see. Oh, we, we still got this one going on, actually. All right. On the red team, you have... Well, red, red team's winning. There you go. They're winning. They are winning! Floor will stand on this node until the game ends. Because that is a very good strategy. And so will under the willow tree as well because that is also a good strategy. The thief is rotating to guarantee this node, while the other warrior AFKs and will die on point, because that will essentially point. win the game for the red team, especially with this kill that ends the game. Well done. Did you see that? Red team got a we did it. Is Wooden Potatoes good at PvP? Yes. I think a lot of people tend to 
People underestimate streamers, but uh, definitely streamers who focus on um, stuff like lore a lot more um, uh, in general. Yeah, Wooden Potatoes is actually very good at PvP. He's um, a uh, legend uh, tier player for a PvP. And he's been a pretty consistent uh, PvP player, actually, uh, throughout all of Guild Wars 2. Actually a true story. All right. Ah, uh, looks like we have got another round. Here we go. Ah, uh, 55 versus Josh. That's quite interesting, actually. What else do we have here, though? Do we have any other exciting games? Any exciting game scenarios? Maybe this one. Let's go check it out. Let's get into the mix. None of the games have started. It's time. It is time. This is a game. Have we got any other big games? Any big games? What's going on? The match starts soon. Not really sure, to be honest. We might have a bit of a bit of a chill matchup. How about this one? Forest. The Forest of Niflhel. We have Spocka. We have Lord of Kex. Crixels. On the Untamed. The Unleashed. Greatsword Longbow. Catalyst. Hammer. Zella. Cranel on Daredevil. No longer the Willbender. And Straub Guard. Probably on a support guardian, I imagine. Don't lose to the Beast. I mean, I've seen Bill die to the Beast. We all have. We've all seen Bill die to the Beast, guys. We absolutely have. Yeah, this could be a potentially interesting match, actually. Well, I mean, the blue team points. need to actually get their She's fifth there. player in here now. I think uh, a little bit favorable here towards the uh, the red team. Which you do see the change over towards the, the power build here from Ginger as well. Certainly seems to be performing extremely well. Uh, one of the only things that we've seen rank 55 dragons have a little bit of difficulty in dealing with is exactly this uh, very high DPS power chronomancer build. So that's now what we see here. I think we are, yeah, we're going to see very heavy folks. So that Thief is going to immediately be going for that constantly. Of course, Thief very good at dealing with Mesmer. Just in general. So seeing that focus, not really a surprise to anyone. Asdome lurking around here. Trying to get something done. Ooh, needs to be very careful though. The Torment's going to kill him. Yeah, that was a big, he got spiked with a lot of Condies. And that Untamed landing an attack for massive damage output. And actually, Red Team... Losing two players here immediately. They do actually have a bit of map control right now as their warrior was able to secure this node. Whereas blue team, they were very focused on these fights. They were very, very focused on getting in there and getting these kills. Immediately. Yeah, and unfortunately we cannot see the relics. Uh, relics, the UI of the game for spectating has not been updated. Uh, regrettably, I'm not totally sure if they will update it either. Um, but don't worry, I will pester Arena Just to see if like I can that. make them do it. Blue team takes a how, I mean, how bad can it be? How hard can it be to add relics to the PvP UI? Maybe it will break the entire game. In fact, it may well break the entire game. Anyway, here we go. Oh. It's a bit unfortunate. It's a sad Blue situation. Okay, Blue Team though, actually doing well, I think, so far. Picking up those kills was big. They're now locking in middle, too, at the same time. Uh, they've got to attract that thief, though. Yeah, that's very annoying. The thief slips past. It's actually a double thief game. 
So it's a very unusual matchup here. So red team are going to be zipping all over the map right now. Uh, and blue team are going to have to be very, very careful uh, with tracking that. In fact, it's a quadruple theme. I didn't see Spocker. I thought, Sp Sp thought Spock was playing NG. He's supposed to be NG, but actually, no, it's a Spectre here from Spocker. So we actually have four thieves in this game. A lot of mobility. It'll be very difficult to keep track of everything that's going on. Um, wow. Very exciting. Very exciting situation. Okay. Yeah, Spocker about to fall. Ginger gets that kill. Warrior here from floor, existing over there. And I think the Red double berserker is going to be a bit pain uh, to deal with for blue. Like, uh, there's a lot of 1v1 potential, a lot of outnumbered survival potential here. And I think these are some of the builds that are going to be very good. And I think that's the double thief can operate quite nice for that. And in a way, the mesmer is almost like a third thief in a way. Is going to have that blink. We'll be able to be very mobile, very bursty to pick up kills that are kind of locked in these 1v1s. And that's kind of exactly what we see red team doing right now. They're just positioning these berserkers just to 1v1 some random stuff. And they just wait for a big high damage roamer just to finish the job pretty much when they've been able to actually exhaust a couple of these cooldowns. Uh, and there's not quite as much 1v1 potential here uh, from the blue team. They, of course, do have the catalyst. And, well, you can see almost like the inverse happening here as well. It's very easy to die. There's a lot of damage. There's a lot of damage in the game right now. You can see a lot of these players. In the previous meta, you might survive like for a good chunk of time in a 1v2, but we're seeing very good players have a huge amount of difficulty surviving, uh, even for a very short amount of time, actually, um, when they actually get plus one by some of these like roaming builds. So instant death there. Yeah. Thief is meta since 2012. Well, I mean, there have been a few times when Thief hasn't been good, but yeah, Thief in general tends to be very, very good. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's a little bit inherent to the class, right? Um, just being as mobile as you are is just inherently good uh, in a, you know, in a, in a game mode like Conquest. So Thief, even if Thief is a bit weird and maybe doesn't do that much damage, it, it always like finds a way to be useful in these PvP games just because of the nature of how Thief is. Blue team grabbed a capture point. That's how it is. You actually can switch with areas on the map. But yeah, I'm clicking on players. But you can actually do this. Look, you can look at this eyeball. You guys want to see the Chieftain? Look, it's the Chieftain. Point. Isn't that crazy? I can go over here. Look, there's Svarnir. Wow, insane. Oh. That's actually a big play. Do you guys see that? That's actually a giga move. They knew they were going to die. So they teleported to the Chieftain and then attacked it so it would kill them faster. That's actually a huge brain play. Floor also fully eliminated at this point too. And this is actually turning into a bit of a match here. He lost. The beast got him. Although, that was not a beast 1v1. Okay, that was a deliberate beast feed. Ooh, Spock are getting blasted there by Asdom. There, It does port up, actually. It gets revived by the Guardian. What a combo, though. That's kind of funny. There's the revive. And blue team holding on. Catalyst grabs that. Oh, no, not again. Ah! It's so, honestly, it's... It's so funny as a spectator to watch this happen. It's so annoying when you do this in game. Look, poor Zella runs right past the thief in stealth and they go for the decal. That is incredibly, that actually sucks for blue team, that? to be honest. Red Having that second O would be really point. nice, but well, that's the nature of stealth, guys. That's, that's thief, right? You got to watch out for that. Ooh, big kill there. Did big gravity wall, but Red actually the counter gravity wall is huge. Oh my God, that was disgusting. Oh, hang on. The stomp though. Oh, the stomp actually rallies straub guard with the hard carry right there we love to see that that was a disgusting res what an intense interaction that was the thief gravity well then the mesmer gravity well then everyone died then it was the stomp from the guardian that is what we like to see insane content okay and actually picks up another kill on this thief is going to go for the stomp now azom can't really get the stealth off there in time to deny that stomp it's going to move elsewhere instead Blue, Ooh, blue nearly board. getting back into this. They're still having a bit of a tricky time doing it. Now we actually have Spocker here on middle trying to contest that. We'll have to deal with the Mesmer from the enemy team. Oh, no, not again. Like, I, I, blue team is actually struggling with this. They are struggling. They've got to track these thieves a little bit better. They've got to be predicting this, right? You've got to be ready for this to happen. Floor is literally pushing far off respawn. Giga Chad, Warrior main. <laughs> Blue team grabbed a capture point. <laughs> I was going to flame him and say maybe he should try to be off respawn less so he can just stay at far, but 
Honestly, you know, that's harsh. You know, that that's harsh, guys. PvP is difficult. It's hard to survive. Uh, I can't just go around roasting people for dying. That just doesn't feel right. Meanwhile, the 2v2 begins. Oh, look at that relic activating. Doing Omega DPS. Throw got a PP in the downside here. And red team just maintaining their lead here. Like, even though they lose their thief, Ginger and the other Berserker just existing here is going to be... means It's going to be hard to actually get rid of this node there. Uh, meanwhile, we have Flora and Asdo. And this is a weird 2v2. I don't think there's really enough damage here for the blue team to get stuff done. That's why they're bringing in Spocker. Core Guardian, not really the thing you want in these 2v2s. You want to have more damage in these 2v2s rather than having some support because you just can't contribute enough to the output. And you get overwhelmed by the amount of damage that your opponents bring. The Guardian is staying here. This is honestly so annoying as a support because you kind of have to leave this. But the problem is, is that the Untamed is not really going to have a particularly good time here. Uh, into this warrior unless they can like go for a really quick kill it's going to be hard for the uh, the untamed to get this done looks like they want to force the node as hard as possible wow do you see six condies get applied by one skill including 10 sacks of confusion no the, the fucking reflect on mace 2 knocked the ranger back definitely a frustrating situation they do get that cap and now we're going to see the guardian rotate when four does need to be a little bit careful but over time should be able to outvalue pretty aggressively here uh into this ranger unfortunately um that's always really annoying us but when you know that you're a, you're leaving a 1v1 that's really difficult for the person you're supporting, but you kind of have to do it, otherwise you're wasting time. you got to make the best of a bad situation. Honestly, the support guard staying that long was not good. Uh, as you can see, that the entirety of the blue team essentially died while they were going for a cap on a node that immediately got decapped because of a very favorable 1v1. So you've got to watch out for that. You have got to watch out for Did that. Did you see that? Red oh, yeah, Red. That's a big lead for Red. That, that particular, like, set of deaths, set of interactions was pretty insane. Because now the uh, Untamed also gets picked off. The Guardian is essentially dead in the water here as well uh, versus two thieves. Ooh, this is a crumble. This is a big crumble, I'm afraid. This might be the end of blue. Yeah, Guard dies right as a respawn comes through. Um, we do have the Catalyst going for the decap, though, which is pretty nice, I guess. But I'm not sure if it's going to be nice enough. Crown, I think, went for a relog there. I think he might still be loading in. Yep, there we go. Uh, loads in. I think maybe got stuck in some terrain or something like that. Spocker falls here on middle. Ah, oh, man, this is rough. Blue get middle, but there's a massive army of red arriving at this stage too. Wait. Oh, never mind. Crown actually... Crown actually is AFK. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Oh, content, guys. Content is happening. Wait, this is fucking huge, guys. My side my side noda is win trading, I think. Here it is, guys. Flaming is activated here, guys. We're getting that PvP gameplay. PvP juice. There it is, guys. Content is finally right. Finally, we have content. Because <laughs> DGF is like, well, to be fair, I think they were just I think they were just having a little bit of difficulty tracking the thief you know i i think the thief was very sneaky the thief was just all over the place you know yeah and there it is yeah <laughs> i cba carrying there it is yeah. <laughs> well i guess this game is over this game Just like has that, ended. Blue team takes a capture point. Let's get a. Let's see what else we got. Have we got a, any spicy matches? Any spicy games? Yeah, 55 versus Josh was not super interesting. This one could be good. Yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this chat, man. It, it, <laughs> Red team wins a capture point. Oh, boy. Okay, anyway. Let's continue. <laughs> We've got a very exciting matchup here. 422 to 420. Uh, red team picking up two kills, but they're very low, actually. So it could go either way still, I would say. Uh, but two kills against blue is probably enough to actually secure this victory in favor of red, I want to say. Yeah, it looks like this untamed will be able to get out of combat and fully reset. And red team, they're going to make this happen. Picking up this kill there. 
should basically get the job done in their favor. All right, here we go. The, dude, this guy has the name The Light Blade, Inventor of Salt. <laughs> Gets a kill with that Spellbreaker. The Dragon Under Trap pops off. Going for the Stomp there might not be the smartest idea, actually. Oh, gets, oh imagine if he got feared into the Beast and died. That would be pretty funny. It's not going to happen, though. They're probably going to go for the Beast now to finish the game. It's actually surprisingly risky. I'm not actually sure if this is a very good idea. Uh, because, yeah, look, now the... Oh, no! The, oh, oh, oh. Steal the Beast. Oh, Blue didn't get it. That would have been really funny if Blue was able to pull that off, but it simply was not to be. Didn't get it. It would have been a very funny moment, but it didn't exist. Yeah. There you go. Very nice. Tori, we are just going into the el elimination phase, Kira. I believe. Once all of these games resolve, we are done with the Swiss section. Shoes, so thanks for the tier one. Hey, I am indeed. Wait, what the hell is this? The game just ended, but I, I see nothing. The game is a dark void. And Red Team won. It was a close match, actually. Two French teams against each other. And here we go. Elimination. Yep. Oh, it's 55 versus French. Round one. Let's see if they can pull it off. Which you have Mamaya's in there on the other side of the bracket, of course. The second seed is actually Z Squadron. Interesting. Very good. Very good. The servers are going down. I'm not Dutch, no. Oh, really, Kenny? Are you feeling particularly sharp, humble, and wise today, or what? Uh, who is the Z Squadron? Let's see what we got going on. Ah. Ah, Enigma's team. ZS Moon. <laughs> what the fuck are these names? <laughs> what is going on here? What is the situation? Oh, this is big, actually. Really Reed versus Darren's Fungus Among Us. That is pretty big. I love to see it. Yeah, I guess it's Z Squadron Moon. Or maybe Z Squadron Moon. Who knows? All right. Here we go. Prepare yourselves. Prepare to game. Ah, oh, Reaper from Gorna. Let's see what he's going with. Yeah, kind of the same build. Oh, he's going with Torch. The match torch Pistol. Soon. Yeah, kind of a very strong weapon combo. That's popping up kind of all over the place, really, actually. Um, with Necromancer in general these days. Let's see what we got. Let's do it. The game begins Rabid Amulet and Rune of the Lynx being used Hold to. to Chill to the bone, Seize spectral theirs. ring, a well of darkness, and your soul is mine. Floody on the scrapper this time, not the hollow. Ah, uh, yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen Floody do this, actually. He goes for bandage self. He goes with the med kit instead of a, I guess, a, a, a normal heal skill, I suppose you could say. This is a very high DPS build. Has all the grenades and all. This could be scary here. Who's going to leave stealth first, actually? Bit of a weird one. Yeah, actually, Demolish, I think, kind of predicted the push there. Moves away. Was a little bit worried about that scenario. Saw it coming. We do actually have the push here from the Berserker, I believe. Yeah, there we are. Wolf Spider makes it all the way over to the other side of the map. And this is going to be a bit of a weird start to this game with Red going for a very aggressive push. But are they going to find anything? That's a good question, actually. Their target looks to be like it will be the support guy. It's some good kiting by Enigma. Yeah, nice port there. Has all CDs available, pretty much. Has that renewed focus. And Floody is going to be one to go down first here. Big and power comes through. Very nice stun uh, from the Reaper, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. Goes for that revival. Will it land? It actually does. Very nice res, in fact. Revives coming through on both sides. Not a melon. Very, very low. Falls over. Will get Just fully like cleaved that. out. And red Moon team, team are going to secure that kill. Red actually utilized their thief to immediately push over. That does see the Berserker moving in, so no real point in actually engaging that fight. Meanwhile, thief now moving back over to middle. Decap from red comes through after winning that fight. Floody already back in the mix. 
We'll now begin this 1v1 into Demolish on the Hollow Smith, actually. Oh, God. It's hard to keep track of the action. Everything's dying instantly. Blue team grabbed a capture point. Actually, have the Guardian immediately falling. Did you see that? Red team got a capture point. There we go. Will not be a revival. And actually gets bled out for a little bit, too. Pretty nice kill there for our red team. Floody now picking up the mansion at the same time. Uh, wants to go for a couple of kills. He just goes for the decap and now sees a few juicy targets over here. Looks like the target is just going to be directly onto... Well, it's a little bit tricky, actually. I guess maybe the berserker being chased down right now. Actually, rather... Oh, sorry. The spectre, in fact, being chased. It's a double... Wait, is it? Yeah, yeah. Dude, these guys have, like... They both begin with C, okay? It's like Cookie Monster, right? Like, on the berserker. And we also have the spectre with a similar name. Blue doing a good job of rotating, though, actually. Red, Just like not that. quite as mobile. Uh, Zerging a little bit more, and they're definitely getting a lot of kills. We see Nottamelon going down here. Uh, we're going to see Demolish end up falling here, Skinny Engineer. And that's going to leave Enigma very exposed, too, on the Core Guardian. But it's uh, it's a little bit tricky, I think. Red do need to get out on the map and actually secure some positions. And they do have this problem with their comp. Their comp does not have that Berserker. And without that Berserker, without that Berserker, this is tricky. Right, they don't have that brick wall they can just sit on a node. They are very reliant on momentum. They must upset the flow of their opponent's team. And of course, that's going to be easier said than done when their opponents also have a thief on that um, at the same time. And that's when we kind of see this. Even though red team is doing really well in a lot of these fights, they don't really have anything that's just going to sit there and cap stuff, right? And sit there on those nodes. Oh, they nearly had this kill, actually. They're so close to getting it on the Guardian and the horse, but they really want to push for it, but they're not going to get it. Caspi in the downstate are slightly off there. They're trying to go for a revival, ah, but I'm like, not sure they can get it yet. Yeah, they maybe can, actually, with Floody now moving into with the Function Drive. They do get it. Whoa, that was very scary, though. But the burst, actually, comes out there from the Catalyst. Massive damage from this burst. Uh, this, uh, this catalyst, it's like the fresh air build, I guess, right? Yeah, the fresh air build. This one's actually kind of fallen out a little bit of favor. But as you can see, still has a little bit of something that can bring to the table. They're that firework relic, once again, very popular. I mean, you know, across the entire game, actually. Just turns out that 10% more damage is pretty damn good. And actually, a devastating team fight victory here, actually, for the Z Squadron. Picking up pretty much the entirety of the red team. Yeah, basically everyone died there. And that's going to be a big tempo swing in their favor. And on this map, you really want to get control early. It's a small map. It's a very linear map. Like this that. means it's quite Blue easy to actually trap point. your opponent in the map. You can see here that there are actually like only a couple of exits that you can actually use. They're quite small too. Quite some choke point situations there. And you always have to fight into high ground a lot of the time when you're leaving your own base. So it's very easy to actually get locked into your own base on this map. And we kind of see red team... Uh, or rather, blue team preparing to do that, right? They picked up two nodes. They were a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit cautious about pushing over to the third one. You don't want to overextend when you've got a big lead like this, a big victory uh, kicking in there. Now they're kind of using the Berserker to intrude over here a little bit. Berserker gets out, though. Blue Still has that sundering leap. Point. Plenty of mobility available. Shouldn't be uh, too much of a scary scenario, I believe, for the blue team. Okay, here we go. Did you see that? Red team got a capture point. What's going to be the next stage of the game? So red regrouping. They have all their players back, and now they're going to go for a big push. Yeah, they've got the team fight presence. You know, that's where that Reaper is going to kick in. Uh, but of course, the Reaper is really scared of the Chronoman. So like the Reaper will pretty much get one shot uh, by a build like that. So you have to be careful. Boom! There it is. A lot of conditions coming out there. Uh, on to Gornet. That Hollow Smith doing some pretty heavy damage. On the Slick Shoes, the CC on that Reaper is really scary. Guardian doing a very good job supporting, though, actually. Some very serious healing coming down. Needs to get some Shroud. Very low on Life Force, though. I think just barely is going to live for now, but will be forced away a little bit. Goes in Shroud just defensively, I think, at that point. And that means there's no offensive potential. Like, and without this Reaper kind of pumping away, it's going to be difficult. However, really good uh, punish there on that Thief jumping onto that Reaper. In fact, wow, that was very nice by Fly. Gets perfect tracking on that and finds that kill. The Glyph, uh, sorry, the Revival is absolutely massive though. Is there one available for Gornet? There actually is. It should land. No, it doesn't, unfortunately. It has to get cancelled at the last second. Not going to come through in time. So blue team 
actually deflect that push from red extremely effectively. We have Floody off to the side, just continuing this 1v1, but mm, super hard into that Berserker, right? Very, very hard indeed. It's a very just good 1v1 like build. That. It's a very, very powerful 1v1 build. Point. And not much is going to be capable of matching that uh, in this particular, you know, setup right now. Blue team grabbed a capture point. Yeah, and a triple cap. This is not looking good whatsoever. I think we're going to be seeing the Z squadron move forward. Let's see how the French are doing versus 55. Oh boy, actually, hang on a minute. And again, it's definitely a good map for the French's comp. It's actually incredibly even right now. The French actually a little bit ahead currently. They did just lose their scourge. They are a player down right now, but French worms about to pop off. Could this be their victory? Could this be how they get it done? Here it is. Again, it's the same composition being utilized by the French. A support guy, and now they're going for a repush. They just got their necro back, so now they're going to get back into the mix. Here we go. We have the Warriors 1v1ing. Not a surprise there. Of course, honestly, dude, this is, this 1v1, you could actually make an entire video about this 1v1. This is uh, Goku and Draza, two of the most legendary uh, warrior players in the entire game. Now, it does get interrupted. How, uh, boy, but what are you doing, boys? He's interrupting the 1v1. Fucking boys, man. Ruining the content. But anyway, here he comes. It's going to get chased away a little bit by that Vindicator, so the 1v1 can continue. Meanwhile, we actually have uh, uh, Esprit moving back here on the court. What is this name? Okay, like, <laughs> moving back in. Boy, still on the run, actually, being chased down by the Vindicator uh, of Azaz. Oh, yeah, you can see how much damage that shortbow can do, even on a power build, right? It's a very hybrid-style weapon where both uh, types of damage do a lot, that uh, seven shot. And actually, wait, kill! Does he actually pull off a 1v2? That is pretty beast mode there. I didn't see the full context there, but an almost 1v2 from Killmage onto Maya and Frey. Frey falls over. Killmage picks up the mansion there. Beautiful play there from Az is rotating in there. And Worms actually have the two cap. And Zan, uh, or the boy, does eventually get chased out. Like he, his pig picked up a fucking rock, man. What, what is this? The forage picks up the rock. Esprit finishes the kill. And rank 55 dragons are in some serious trouble here. As they just lost two players. And worms are about to converge on middle. They're a bit trapped here. This is scary for Misha in particular. He was the one who's going to have a bit of difficulty getting out of this. He's going to have to kite well to hold on here. Maya also in trouble. Looks like, in fact, uh, the Spectre is going to be the target, potentially, uh, of Red Team. They're going to lunge in for that kill. Well, yeah, I told you that Guardian, though. There's going to be a lot of pressure on this node. Misha not wanting to give her up on the point here is using a lot of these defensive cooldowns to hold on. Does a good job doing it, actually. And here comes the reinforcements. Frey now moves in. Now, we are going to have to see Goku get chased away. Yeah, there's no way he can hold against both Draza and Boyce simultaneously. That would simply be ridiculous. However, the Scourge does come in with some nice support. Boyce actually gets feared away. Isn't able to finish off. The French are actually playing out of their minds here. This is an absolutely insane game. I kind of forgot this was even going on. That's kind of my bad, actually. Very close matchup. Red team just barely in the lead currently. Now we have the Scourge moving in here. I'm not sure if this is a good 2v2 for Red. And I think, yeah, they recognize that. Because, again, the Scourge doesn't have enough damage to contribute in the 2v2 situations. You kind of want to be in 3v3s of that, I feel like. Anyway. Meanwhile, Draza now the target. Support moves in. And we have Boyce rotating out. I actually like that 55. This will give them a lot of kill potential on the map and improve their matchups overall. Maya got a sneaky decap into the full cap. That's very good. There's no thief to match that right now. Kill may have to rotate over there to deal with that. And so far, 55 getting back into the driving seat some very nice rotations there, getting them the fights they need to get back into this this is going to be very very slow looks like the scourge might be able to out value here because again it's kind of like support on both sides here yeah probably a little bit better for red team again because the scourge does apply a good amount of pressure are they going to try and force the issue and get this node red it looks like it's not they're going to Leave it neutral and let the Scourge rotate back in. I think that is the correct call, actually. Because these, um, I think in games of this skill level, you can't really afford to be outnumbered for that long. You, you can't be greedy and try and force the issue and force that node. So I think this is very intelligent here from the French team. Maya under pressure, though, actually does manage to teleport away quite nicely. But the French, they've got to get this back under control. They've got to find a kill summer. Looks like it's going to be the Spectre. Itself. Oh, that immobilizer is massive. And Maya is going to go down. Does Misha have the Signet? Yes, he does. Is there an interrupt? There is not. Thief gets back on their feet. And the fight will actually continue raging. And points starting to get a little bit scary. Red need to make something happen. And they need to make it happen now. Otherwise, they are going to lose control of this game. Goku doing a fantastic job. If he could win this 1v1, that would be huge. It, it might be a very stale matchup. Both these players obviously very, very skilled. But if he could somehow find a 1v1, that would be huge. It looks like he might be able to force the issue on this node potentially. Now we do actually have the plus coming in from Kill. 
Here it is. Oh, very nice block there by uh, Draza actually denying that. that? Looks like the node has been forced. So yeah, that allows Kill simply to leave. Because I think that might prompt Draza to leave as well. And see if he feels confident to get the decap. He's going to go for it, actually. It will take him a while, I think. But look, that is going to be the game plan here. We did actually have the Vindicator for the red team falls. That's a big kill at this stage in the game. Any kill is going to be insane for either team at this point. Ooh, Draza actually in a bit of trouble. He may end up going down. Gets the cleanse. Has 900 health. Can Goku finish the job? It may well happen. Happen. That could be a huge kill that would really free up Goku. Oh, no, it wouldn't really. He'd have to wait for the respawn anyway. But, well, just regardless, getting rid of a player who can contribute in some of these fights will be big. Some very narrow escapes there uh, from our blue team warrior. Middle node now is a very major point of contention. Red team must get rid of this. They have to take this fight. They're going to go for Draza. Is Draza going to fall over? Gets his heal skill off, I think. Should be able to. Here it comes. Oh, gets interrupted though, actually. Can the red team get this kill? They've got to get it. Here's the heal skill again. Can he get it this time? Yes, he does. He should be pretty safe now. Yeah, should be okay, at least for the time being. Gets the earth shield as well for more support. Oh, and blue actually rotates a very sneaky rotation there by Boyce. Moves over. Oh, he actually might be able to get rid of the Berserker. Lands a huge burst. Uh, into the Berserk, and I think 55 have recovered it, actually. Oh, that would have been a big upset, I want to say. Frey falls over. The game isn't over just yet, but I think 55 have really got themselves into a good spot. Yeah, Kill won't be able to hold this 1v2. Not for very long, anyway. And the, it looks like Blue Team holding on to middle. I don't think the, I don't think the Scourge can finish this kill. Does not really have the output for this, in my opinion. Um, or maybe just barely, actually, or it can at least hold it like in the down state, but the game is about to be over. And I think all, uh, yeah, all Misha has to do is just AFK here in the game will end uh what a game though actually what a game yeah the hand res arrives there as we have maya moving into the mix the guardian is here but it's not quite enough the french kind of made it happen there they were yeah got a big flurry of kills here in that mid game and extended that into kind of the second uh, you know the three quarter portions of the game i suppose but in the end 55 they got a very slick couple of rotations there um very you know kind of in the later stages of the game did a very good job wow my bark is strong, my roots are deep. My branch is long, my sap will seep. I cannot wilt, I cannot die. My trunk is built, my body spry. I am the tree. Free black line key, thank you. Yeah, first elimination. First elimination match there, actually. 55 will continue. And now, I think their main opponent will be the Z Squadron. That was a big game there by the French. Intense PvP gameplay gamers. Very intense, hardcore PvP gaming. We absolutely love to see it. There you have it. That is the end of that. Okay. Let's see what's going on over here. Finals will be 500 to 149. There is the prediction. The big prediction. So I guess this is the first... Um, I guess this is the other semi-final, right? Oh yeah, this is the first semi-final. Then this one is going to be the second one. I don't know who Zaraxia is, but I imagine... Uh, yeah, it's the fifth seeded team. Probably going to be a little bit tricky. To deal with. Um, for... For them. Against 55. However... Blue team here is now the only thing, I think, that stands in the way of Rank 55 Dragons from claiming the first Secrets of the Obscure monthly automated tournament. So let's see what we got. Enigma. Support Guardian. Demolish. The Holosmith. Ioni. Spectre. Nautamelon. Catalyst. It's actually the DPS build, too. Not the hammer build. Rune of the Warrior with Berserker Amulet. Scepter Focus Gaming. Wow. The match Insane. Soon. And then Cookie Monster. Wolf Spider. On the Berserker. Berserker Gaming. What relic is the support using? I believe it's um, Rune of the Antitoxin is being used uh, quite frequently. Because it, it basically means that whenever you cleanse, um, whenever you cleanse, you basically cleanse an extra condi with a short cooldown. And that includes everything. So like your combo fields and your F2 and stuff like that. So it's a lot of extra conditions cleansed. 
across the board. It's hard to tell, though, because it's not in the UI. Feels bad. 500 to 300 red. I retire if red lose. That's interesting, actually. I would probably say that the blue team fairly heavily favored here. Well, that berserker instantly dead. Goes for the push. Red team punish team it instantly. Maybe point. I have cursed them. Maybe the curse has happened. Blue team grabbed a capture point. Yeah. Mace uh, NG has tons of confusion, by the way. It does indeed. I think uh, people are messing around with that build as well, actually. Um, the uh, Mace build. Probably with Relic of Akeem on Engineer. Some kind of like Condi Engineer build. Yeah. It's not in the UI. We have no idea what Relic. It's Mystery Relic, guys. It's Mystery. It's Guess That Relic. That's what we're doing here. Regardless of that, the gaming now begins. Bear in mind, the winner of this team is almost certainly going to the finals of day of the month of the daily monthly, the monthly automated tournament here. Red team wins a capture point. Yeah. Okay, and actually, red team coming out very strong here. In fact, a guardian here from red under a lot of pressure has to pop the elite. Yeah, that reaper gets run over a little bit. A tricky map for necromancer, to be honest. Very, very big. Necro's quite slow, and honestly, not the best kiting spots. And yeah, oh, look, oh. Oh, if that had worked, that would have been really funny. Didn't work, but still goes down anyway. The super speed on this engineer, helping them kind of wriggle away here. Yeah? Like being chased down by uh, being chased down by the Spectre and their own support guardian. Or oh, Millennium Falcon gets hit by a skull grinder. Ouch! That is not uh, is not pleasant, and gets taken out. Thief arrives. Don't see that being particularly revivable, though. To be honest, we'll have to just back off. I think. What map is not tricky for Necro? It's a fair point. Necro in general, maybe not doing so hot currently uh, in the uh, in the current meta. It's not ideal. It looks like the Scourge is kind of working out. I guess Skyhammer and Kylo. You're all right on Necro. That's uh, you're doing okay there. And the French could have won that game. They 100% could have won without a shadow of a doubt. They could have pulled that off. They definitely could have done. Meanwhile, we actually have the red team just going down state here again. They got a good start, but blue appear to be taking a bit of control now. Uh, trying to finish off a lot of these kills. Getting rid of the support guardian as well. What's the next victim here? Yeah, red can't really do that much. The thief is definitely the player has the most potential right now. Runs all the way to the other side. Of course, there is a thief from blue. Might try and match that. Looks like the spellbreaker is going to join the thief and just try and sit on the far node. A little bit of a scary business though, actually. As again, they're going to be heavily outnumbered here. At least for the time being. So we are going to see Did the see thief that? move over. Red Guardian can probably simply just go back over and reset. Guardian is going to come over here and actually kind of take this 2v2. It's not the weird 2v2 going on there. Uh, as the warrior and the thief versus the guardian and the thief. Probably going to see a disengage from blue. This is a little bit too weird. Not really where they want to be. They delay a little bit of time. Now they're simply going to rotate away. Oh, sorry. It was Still the uh, cat. It was not the thief. I'm too used to this player playing thief. It was actually the catalyst, in fact. What is happening? Well, I'll tell you what is happening. Red team is losing. Uh, especially seeing as blue just got up above for free, turning this double cap into a quadruple cap. Not exactly what you want. You know, this is a suboptimal scenario, I would say. Buffs will happen and blue will choke. I mean, it seems like the opposite is happening. It seems like blue is anti-choking. They remembered stillness. That's definitely step one. Uh, tranquility could definitely trip them up here as well. Ooh, Demolish goes for a big burst. Full damage. Oh. I always do love to see a full damage death. Not going to be happening this time around as the Scrapper able to wriggle away, but Blue are just holding on. They just know, yeah, we've got the buff. We don't need the third node. And that kind of nullifies it. The Warrior was just kind of lurking around here, expecting a push. Never happened. Uh, Red eventually are able to dislodge their opponents from the middle node, but they lose a player in the process. Reaper goes back to try and go for a capture, but Blue, I imagine, are going to go for a pretty big push here. Thief leaves that fight, does Skog X over here, but actually is matched um, by Cookie Monster, the Berserker. So even though this does get neutralized, the Thief is obviously not going to be able to contest into this, has to now run away. Well, look, that is disgusting. What was that? One attack, 
One third of the thief's health. You know, like, I, I like that, guys. That's what we like to see. Oh, we actually have a revive coming through. Oh, no! Oh, no! What a classic! That is unfortunate. They picked up a kill. That's a kind of a big mistake, actually, there from Blue. Like, they got a kill on the Guardian. The Scrapper just runs up and insta reses with the Function Gyro. We kind of love to see that. Ooh, that is pain. Ends up leading to the uh, death of Demolish, too. The revival from Enigma is very good, though. Uh, getting the blue engineer back up on his feet again almost immediately. And we're still seeing a good hold. Here. A bit low on support cooldowns, though. Demolish in a lot of trouble is going to have to kite away. Nope, he's just going to go ahead and have to die, actually. Come back after respawn. Uh, this is a little bit of a scary fight right now. Cooldown's very low for the blue team, I think. So they have to be very careful. Yeah, we see them start to disengage away from this now and kind of consider their next move. Berserker going for the far push. We'll start to initiate a 1v1. But we'll actually have to go back because of the Thief. Yeah, now notices will now simply return over to this node over here. And Red actually giving a little bit of hope. And we actually Can have uh, both buffs Red coming up. Still on the same tranquility. So a lot of stuff to manage right now. There's going to be five objectives on the map. The normal nodes and two very powerful buffs. Of course, the stillness buff doubles you the amount of points you get uh, from having nodes captured for a while. And then Tranquility will instantly capture all of the map for you if you get it. Man, Thief is kind of blasting right now. Like, actually just destroying everything left and right. These Daredevils are just hunting people down and just obliterating them. I like the falling damage death there. That was almost certainly intentional, by the way, just to get off respawn. They knew that there was no potential of any kind of revival there whatsoever. Ooh, this is a bit of a tricky one as well for Enigma. It does go for the elite skill. We'll try and hold on alongside the warrior, but that Reaper is going to be a problem. Yeah, you can see the Reaper just going crazy, bringing that DPS out. But gets a very nice port, but it's going to be hard to survive. Tries to hold on, but has absolutely nothing left. So many conditions on that Guardian. Is this revival by the Berserker? It's going to be tricky. Maybe now with the Thief as well, they can try and hold on there. But yeah, they're just going to take the 2v2 instead of going for that revival. Blue team still kind of marching onwards, staying ahead. Red Thief goes for that decap. Pretty juicy. We have some 1v1 action going on here as well. Scrapper versus Catalyst. And whoa, big damage coming out from the Catalyst. Forces the Scrapper to drop down there. And this might lead to a free upper buff yet again. Note we have Falco and Skolgex kind of lurking around to deny that. And red team... Do actually get a little bit of map presence here. Uh, this buff does make things very hard to handle, very hard to keep control of the map when this is happening. Signet's going to be forced out over there to get the Scrapper back up there. Thief, you know, still gets some value there. He's able to use a very valuable resource of the opponent to get this done. Red, I feel like they're kind of committing very hard to bottom up. They've got to be very careful to do that. They need to be a little bit careful. because I don't think either team is really going to be getting this anytime soon. Uh, the support player may be getting trapped. It will be a bit annoying. This Berserker will eventually whittle through that Guardian's defenses, of course. Yeah, they're trying to get the Scrapper in there, but uh, the, the support player being torn into two here, really, needs to go help this Warrior, but also needs to contest. Oh, and the Scrapper gets caught in the crossfire of all those conditions, actually. And all of a sudden, things are starting to implode a little bit for the red team. Not looking good. You are delusional. Also going to go down state here. Very likely just 4k health left over, that? yeah. Red and we have the Thief on the hunt point. here. Oh, runs directly into the Catalyst. Enjoy that, Blue that's fun. Blue team point. also grabbed upper buff as well for free. And yeah, support Guardian uh, into Holosmith and Berserker. Yeah, good luck holding on there. Falco's going to have to maybe make some kind of desperate rotation to get back in there. But no, they just made, they made, they've made the call. You can see they're just going to go for the recap. They're just going to concede the bottom buff, I think. The Guardian actually holding really well. Wow, actually does manage to live, but it's not going to be quite enough. And Skog X is... The Thief being here is pretty good, can definitely just troll this bottom buff more or less indefinitely. But that, of course, does come at the severe downside of not having your Thief on the map. Blue team grabbed a capture point. At the same time. Here we go. Cookie Monster will just have to be permanently annoyed by the Thief. Oh, that is, that is a nice res. Look at that. You honestly love to see that. Oh, the NG does arrive, though. Just in time to deny that. Oh, do and dies there. That was such a cheeky revive, but actually ends up getting punished for it. Some very good responses uh, from the Guardian and the Engineer on blue team. They're denying that fun play. Uh, and here comes the cap. I think it's going to be the bottom buff. Here it comes. That is going to seal the deal. There'll be no real point of recovery for red team after this. Here it comes. Buff locked in. Everything swings blue. And that is going to be the end of that. Still I believe we essentially see GG called from the red team. Yep, GG has been called at that stage. Up above as well. Ooh, the points are going to go up very, very quickly. We love to see that. Up we go into infinity. And the game is about to end.
And it's going to be the Z Squadron going into the finals to face rank 55 Dragons. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a very tough match. But you know what? Maybe they can do it. We'll see what they can do. Yeah. GG. And that is the end of that, at least for now. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Worst meta in a long time. Every class trying to one shot. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of damage. I have noticed that. We've got a lot of DPS. Hmm. I wouldn't underestimate the Z Squadron, guys. Was the Zerka Condi Mace? Yeah, that's exactly right. Condi Mace um, with Relic of Akeem. And a Rabid Amulet with Trapper Rune, I believe. Yeah, there is crazy DPS uh, going on right now. Absolutely crazy DPS. Boyce will eat them. He does, you know, Boyce does like to feast. Boyce is a big boy, and when it's feeding time, he uses a shovel, if you guys know what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, you know, what do you expect, gamers? You know, it's, it's kind of, you know, week one of the expansion. Stuff's going to be a little bit weird, that's for sure. Yeah. Senior GM watching matches? Yeah, I mean, they actually take the, um... They take the integrity of the monthly AT pretty seriously. Like, they always have GMs, um, watching this to make sure that nothing weird is going on. It's pretty cool. Dreams dead? Wait, send. No. Don't leave us. Don't leave us. We need you. Look, guys, PvP is alive. PvP is alive. We have 5,000 viewers for the monthly AT. Just think about that. Yes. Are 80% of them people farming drops? Yes, that is 100% true. But there's a bunch of real people here as well that's going, wow, I love PvP. It's more than Moda 2. It is, but, you know, if we had drops for Moda 2, think about that, huh? I think it'll be real. I would actually really like it. And maybe I could negotiate with this arena. If we could get, like, front page for PvP tournaments, that would actually be really exciting, especially for the finals. That'd be really cool. Insane to watch. Yeah, pretty hype games, actually. I, I think definitely not the not a perfect meta. There's, everything is a little bit one-shot right now, but uh, that's kind of to be expected, honestly. Like, power creep is very common when expansions drop, so things are going to be a little bit crazy. Excuses games. Prime, nice. Continue. Eighty percent of five thousand is one thousand, lower than usual. Yeah, French versus fifty-five was good. That was a big matchup. <laughs> we having a little argument in chat, guys, about balance. Guardian meta for PvP. I think the best Guardian build right now is Core Support Guardian. That is what seems to be seeing a lot of play currently. That's how it is. And so as ESO, you get used to playing PvP and MMOs. Yeah, in, in Guild Wars, it typically gets sorted out eventually. Hmm. Why can't I expect it the finals myself? It is ArenaNet partner only. Because we are the only ones who can be trusted. Ha! There you go. 
Hey, no worries. I'm glad you're enjoying the uh, PvP, enjoying the daily AT, monthly AT. Oh, it's taking a little while to accept the game. I think this is actually, you know, they're probably using the time to actually figure out how they're going to approach this. Um, like, both teams, obviously a lot on the line, they want to get this win, so they'll be using, like, the five-minute timer to, like, really actually think about, like, how they're going to go about um, approaching this game. How much of a DPS loss uh, to take the trait line? Uh, 133 in Scourge. It's a lot. It's a big DPS increase. So if we're playing... Um, oh, I, I, yeah, I, I don't have it on this character, actually. But yeah, it's a very big DPS loss. But gaining Alacrity is really important, um, obviously. Like, that's going to be a big DPS gain for your group. A DPS and utility gain for your group overall. So you take that if you're... You can pump. You can honestly pump on that build, though. You absolutely can. Uh, you, do, you can do a lot of damage. That build in... Uh, that build does, like, I think it's like 35k, maybe even a bit more on uh, in PvE right now. It's like 35, 37k DPS on a Lax Scourge. A Lax Scourge is very good. It's very good. 36.5, yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I would guess. It's very strong. Uh, Alright, I will do a prediction. Here we go. I'm starting a prediction. Who will win? Rank 55 Dragons versus Z Squad. Let's go. Right, confirm prediction. Let's go. Also, guys, if the entire chat is filled with beans, beanga, Guild Wars 2 will have a bean themed expansion as their next expansion. So it'll just be fully bean themed. We had like, you know, demon themed, but however, next time it would be bean themed. So just completely themed around beans. And there you go. I think you guys did it. You did it. The uh, the entire the entire chat has been filled. Even if I go full screen, I think you guys still did it. Yeah. More or less, anyway. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. A lot of believers in 55. Unsurprising. Ah, it's coming on Legacy for the finals as well. Very exciting. Very exciting indeed. Let's see what we got. Okay then. So here we go. Grand finals. Roy is the greatest ANET dev. I mean, that's actually just true. Like, obviously, that's true. I have never seen a dev so proficient at placing gathering nodes in any game. It's good stuff. All right, here it is. On the red team, it's going to be the Z squad. Only one who bothered to rename his character Enigma. Team role player, and I like that. Support guardian. Same build as usual. Soldier, avatar amulet, then virtues, honor, and valor. Demolish on Holosmith. There it is. With Berserker and Rune of the Holosmith. Full RP. We like it. Ione on Spectre. Condi with Carrion Amulet. Rune of the Revenant. Normal Condi Spectre build. Not a Melon. Catalyst. The DPS Catalyst. It'll be very interesting to see soon. how this one plays out, actually. Quite a vulnerable build, I'd say. We might actually see this be a very uh, heavy focus target for 55. But there it is. Very similar with Rune of the Warrior for a bit of extra tankiness. Alongside Berserker Amulet with the normal build. Cookie Monster with the Condi Berserker build. Very disgusting. Very Relic of Akimi and Rune of the Revenant alongside Rabbit Amulet. And of course, the blue team. Same point. build here from Misha. With a slightly different rune. Rune of the Trapper for a bit more damage. Same build overall, though, I believe. Boyce on the DPS Soul Beast. Here it is. Enjoy it. Firework rune, rune of the Spellbreaker. Maya, same build there with the con, the Spectre, Frey on the kind of the more 1v1 catalyst with the hammer being used. Finally, the master of disaster himself, Misha, also known as Sh 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 Sh. Let's see what we got. Both teams pushing, actually. Not really a crazy surprise. Both these players, they love to do that. And yeah, Draza going to find himself in a 1v1 versus the Hollow Smith. And I think Dimash is going to be... He's not going to like that. Yeah, he got hit by one Skull Grinder. The Relic of Akeem took away two-thirds of his health. Have fun with that. Meanwhile, here on the middle team fight. Actually going pretty okay here for the Z Squad. Although not too much happening either way. Of course, we have the opposite. Oh my god. Boyce dominating this 1v1 actually. On the uh, Soul Beast. 
Doing quite well, actually, into that Berserker. Cookie Monster having some difficulty. Just popped the heal skills. So he needs to be very, very careful. Does have that Reflect and has Berserk mode, but this is really scary for this warrior. Very, very scary indeed. Oh, it's going to try and hold on until that heal skill comes through. Should be all right, I think, here, actually, at the end of the day. Yeah, should be fine. Yeah, it's going to happen. Warrior holds on, but honestly, Boyce winning this 1v1 is pretty insane, actually, because he's actually winning it very hard, too. Uh, does land some big coins, and actually, ooh, that's a bit rough there for Boyce. You can see how punishing it can be against that Berserker build. It really does do a lot of damage with just a few skills. If they land on you, it's going to be pain. Meanwhile, Boyce getting rehealed up, pushing back into middle. Ooh, Draza is dead, actually. I believe that is going to be first blood, in fact, uh, in favor of red team. Now, can they convert that? They're down on nodes right now, as, of course, they didn't have... I think they just have to try and get make sure this warrior is 1v1-ing. They, they've got to have... They need to have uh, this warrior matching Draza, I think. Otherwise, Draza is going to be such a big problem. Like, he's going to be consistently an issue throughout this entire game because they don't really have anything that can match him uh, in that 1v1. And actually, this is kind of the annoying thing. You know, Boyce also more than capable of actually handling himself in this particular duel as well, even on, the un uh, even on this uh, Soul Beast build. Uh, while simultaneously being very heavy roaming damage. And actually might just find it. Is he going to find this kill? That would be really disgusting. Oh my god, yeah. That is really nasty. That is That probably shouldn't be happening, I'm not going to lie. But there it is. Boyce makes it happen anyway. Red team actually winning this fight here on middle. Yep. They do actually manage to win it. Getting rid of that support guardian. Blue team grabbed the capture point. Uh, Boyce is running... Um, he's running... What is it? Oh, man. Red team it's a uh, Spellbreaker ball. rune with Relic of the Fireworks. Oh yeah, 55. Looking good here. You know, Red, they need... It, honestly, if Red Team can sort this 1v1, they're okay. Like, the, this is actually where they, they won the team fight. If they can actually figure out how to manage this um, team fight better... Oh, sorry, the, the 1v1's better, they might be okay. And now we do see that. We have the Warrior 1v1 in there. Of course, it is on blue nodes. It's a little bit scary. It's a little bit scary, actually. Um, because, of course, it will take a long time to get this neutral if, of course, uh, the Red Warrior is going to be able to find a way to get neutrality versus Draza. That's easier said than done. Uh, but here we have this big team fight. If Red can win this, there's some potential here, but already we have Boyce's damage just absolutely unloading into the Engineer. Does get that uh, barrier shield up there, massively reducing the amount of damage taken for a couple of seconds. Has the block too, has the other block. So good hold here by Demolish, but oh my god, the damage up with the Chain CC. It was simply too much. A very nice res from Enigma. That was some serious precision. Well played there by Yeah, but actually Maya does go down state. Can they maybe get a rally war? Oh no, the Signa actually is going to kind of deny the stomp. They deny the cleave and that's going to be a rally. I think yes it is. And the Guardian is going to fall. And this fight will collapse very much in the favor of rank 55 Dragons. I don't see Maya going down there to rally this. No, that's certainly not going to happen. That's going to be the end of that. Not a melon going to go down. And 55. That is a very crushing victory. An absolutely crushing victory here. For the opponents. And that's tough. They're in a very bad spot now. Full control. Full snowball. In favor here. Just and they're just going to keep pushing as well. Yeah, they're going to keep coming. And this is never the position you want to be in. You never want to be triple, tri triple capped having to push back in. But he's actually holding back a little bit. Kind of seeing if there's going to be a push. He's not going in just yet. He knows his team's got it. He knows it's still a 4v4. Is going to go ahead and match this warrior. Uh, as the Berserker tries to make some kind of push happen here. Again, I mean, this is a very snowbally map. Weird things can happen. So this game is certainly not over. And actually, Maya does push it a little bit too far. Gets en Ends up getting taken out there. Draza is still around though, and this is going to be the annoying thing. Like, get dealing with this is so annoying because Red Team's Berserker is on middle, so they don't really have anything that's going to be super good uh, into dealing with that. Especially seeing as the Warrior has actually found himself in a one v three scenario. We'll now return, and maybe we'll simply begin this one v one into Draza. That would be a good state of affairs. Actually, maybe they can even force a kill there as Draza will be one v three for a short period of time here. Some good kiting by the Blue Warrior though. Puts in some pretty good work. And now, yeah, then that 1v1 will begin. It's actually on red node, so this is good for the red team. Oh, but here comes the stealth. Um, untamed, though. Uh, soul Beast. I don't know what I'm talking about. I've seen too many untames in PvP, all right? Like, my brain's fried. Yeah, that's going to, of course, immediately reset this position. Warrior will get chased away here by the Ranger, while Draza simply recaptures this node. Uh, it's looking very, very rough indeed. Red team 
They're kind of having some difficulty just getting the right fights that they're looking for here. They've definitely found the adaptation now. They, uh, I think they're doing a little bit better with handling uh, a lot of these matchups, these 1v1 matches in particular, but they're struggling a little bit to actually get enough value out of what they've got right now. They do get a kill onto Misha. Should be cleavable as well, I think. The Holosmith in particular can do a lot of that AoE damage that will deny that kind of revival. There it is. That's a big win, but their own Guardian goes down. This is so much damage output uh, on the side of rank 55 Dragon. They just come in and just get another Did kill. Frey that? goes down state. However, they're able to eliminate both the Holosmith and the Thief at the same time. I think the Elementalist is not long for this world either. Obsidian Flesh runs out. There is a block, but after that, there is basically nothing left for this Elementalist. And that means it's probably going to be a bit dead here. And here it comes. Soul Beast charging into the fray alongside the Catalyst. There's the kill. And... Uh, I think we're kind of getting to the end here. We're getting to the end. We are getting to the end, unfortunately. Yeah, Ellie gets stomped out. Frey capturing the middle node here. Draza beginning this 1v1, uh, but will actually now be assisted by Boyce. Here he comes on Just the Soul like Beast. That. Blue team takes a capture point. Finds that damage. Uh, yeah, this warrior's in a bit of trouble here. We'll simply force the issue, though. Uh, boys, just not even not even necessarily caring about the kill that much. It will take a while. Just wants to force the node. Leaves immediately. Very smart. Leave the 1v1 to happen on your node uh, while you go and get some more kills elsewhere. We'll end up matching the engineer here on middle. Here it is. There we go. But again, it's triple cap in favor of blue. 400 points are incoming. The prediction is about to activate, I'm afraid. And it's not looking good. Well, it's looking good if you're a, a rank 55 point better. It's not looking good if you bet on the Z squadron. Yeah, this is the finals. The final game here on the EU monthly AT. Demolish making a last stand here alongside the Guardian. They're trying to hold on. They're trying to get something done. They fight till the end. They battle till the end. But it's only a matter of time at this stage. 1v1 stable here for Draza. Middle pretty stable as well. Maya trolling it while Boyce is just lurking around. Looks like it may get neutralized. Don't have, don't quite have the muscle to hold on to that versus the support on the Holosmith. This other node over here though. Misha in play alongside Frey. Quite hard to dislodge. Maya also now moving in to kind of complete the setup. But I mean, just this single node is a big problem. And I don't think this is going to get decapped anytime soon. Draza's moves in. Well, you know, as I say that, you know, we see um, Demolish move in there and do exactly that. But there's still another node over here. Misha is plonked down on it. Maya and Frey also here. Nola Melon goes down. We'll be able to vapor away and then get revived up. But it's looking pretty rough. This is going to be the end of the game here. One node is all they need. Ten points is all they need. 55 win the first month the AT. Funnily enough, I actually think NA resolved a little bit quicker. So I think what you know, first expansion month the AT actually goes to Team USA, I'd imagine, over on the NA server. But uh, in a close second place, it is going to be rank 55 Dragons who get the another month the AT win on the board. There it is. That's it. 55 win. People cheer.